Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, one of the legendary sites for college football. And the LSU fans make it special. 13 times in the last five years, they've jammed more than 78,000 in here to watch their Tigers play, and it looks like they'll do it again tonight as LSU faces Texas A&M on ESPN. The Aggies are coming off their best season in a decade, the culmination of four years under Jackie Sherrill. 1985 brought a 10-2 record, a Southwest Conference championship, and a resounding Cotton Bowl victory over Auburn. The key was Kevin Murray, the sophomore quarterback who led the Aggies to the top in the Southwest. Even though he was still bothered by the effects of a broken ankle suffered in 1984, Murray passed for almost 2,000 yards last season and then threw for 292 in the Cotton Bowl as the conference offensive player of the year. But the Aggies are at their toughest on defense with arguably the best front seven in the game of college football. They are so good, in fact, that Jackie Sherrill feels 10 of the 11 will end up in the pros. Defense has been the name of the game for Bill Arnsparger his entire career, and he has worked his magic since the day he arrived at LSU. The Tigers return almost everyone from a unit that allowed just 10 points a game in 1985. The big play man is All-American linebacker Michael Brooks. Anywhere on the field you see the ball, you'll find the 235-pound senior. He'll need to be at his best tonight as the Tigers host Texas A&M. a sweltering Saturday night in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 83 degrees, the humidity 52%. Both teams are going to use a lot of players tonight under these conditions. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Pat McAnally, and it's great to have you with us for college football on ESPN. Pat, tonight we renew an old rivalry with a couple of teams with exceptional defenses. Well, this should be a great game, Mike. We have two of the best defenses in the country. LSU threw two shutouts last year and held three other opponents to seven points or less. They have 10 returning starters and an All-American in Michael Brooks. On the other hand, Texas A&M has their entire front seven back with three all-conference linebackers and an All-American of their own, Johnny Holland. There'll be some serious hits out there. Wouldn't you say that the difference would be A&M's offense tonight? I think the key to this game will be Kevin Murray. If LSU can stop him, they'll win. However, if he plays like he did at the end of the year last year, he had 290 yards in the Cotton Bowl alone, I think Texas A&M may ride out of here with a shot at a national title. Could be. Tim Brando will be working the sidelines for us again tonight, but right now, he's the best of all possible places at all those pregame parties. Mike, you're looking at a subculture of football fans, the likes of which you may never see again along the CFA Tour. They're called LSU fans, and the party begins on Thursday. They have tailgate parties, Cajun music, Cajun food, and it's all a part of the spectacle and extravaganza that is LSU football. They have a saying down here, you have to eat the hot boudin and drink the cold couscous. That's what makes LSU football something special. And down here, college football is a religion. Saturday night in Tiger Stadium is considered a holy day of obligation. And this holy day of obligation is underway and will continue our observance here on ESPN. ESPN's live presentation of CFA football is being brought to you by Niccolo. Exceptionally smooth, distinctive taste is why the night belongs to Niccolo. By Allstate, we ensure your home, your car, your health, your business, and your life. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by U.S. Armed Services, it's a great place to start. it day and night but we don't mind 
Our nights make Michelob. And Michelob could make your night the best part of your day. If your home was destroyed, would your insurance pay to completely rebuild it? Fact is, even with an inflation clause, your policy may not cover today's higher rebuilding costs. Leave it to the good hands people. Allstate can make sure you're protected. With an Allstate home replacement cost guarantee, we'll pay to completely rebuild your home, no matter what the cost. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Experience an incredible advance in Gillette Shaving Smoothness, Atra Plus. The Plus is the white Lubra Smooth Strip that releases lubricants as you shave. You never felt anything smoother. Atra Plus by Gillette, the essence of shaving. Larry Burnett and Bino Cook back here in the ESPN studios. We'll be keeping track of college football games going on tonight as the game at Baton Rouge continues. Right now, I want to find out what you think of this game, Texas A&M LSU at Baton Rouge. Well, first, Death Valley is what they call LSU. But through the years, LSU hasn't won that many big games at home on Saturday night. It's somewhat of a myth in recent years. Bear Bryant always beat LSU except for a couple times. Tonight, Texas A&M will have problems, and I will predict that LSU will win this game. Now, some polls have actually picked Texas A&M to be number one. I don't think they can be because of the road schedule. I think that's against them. All right. As we said, we'll be keeping track of some other games going on tonight, and let's just tell you what they're going to be. Texas Tech, of course, is at number two, Miami. It's Louisiana Tech taking on number 15, Baylor. That one down in Waco. Number 16, Michigan State going against Arizona State. That could be a good one. Colorado State is at number 20, Arizona. Illinois and USC are already in action. We'll keep you updated on that one. Right now, Illinois is leading it by the score of three to nothing out on the West Coast. It's in the first quarter. And Stanford is taking on the Texas Longhorns. Bunch of good games there. And well, as we said, we'll have highlights and scores and we'll be keeping you up to date as those uh, games come into us here. And we'll also be going back and forth from uh, Baton Rouge where Texas A&M and LSU are going at it. Right now, we're going to take a timeout and then we will throw it back to Baton Rouge for tonight's game between Texas A&M and LSU, the CFA here on ESPN. So stay with us. Attention, property owners. According to a recent statistic, we are experiencing the highest rate of foreclosure since the Great Depression. Don't let foreclosure happen to you. Hi, I'm Hill Oob, president of HOI Incorporated, a company designed to help real estate owners with troubled property. If you've tried to sell but can't, or maybe you're experiencing financial or management difficulties with your property, or maybe you're a lending institution with too many REOs, call HOI today. We can help. 834-2033. The candidacy of Judge Saul Gothard represents a new dimension in the Court of Appeal in Jefferson Parish. Judge Gothard has a graduate degree in social work. He is a university professor, respected attorney, author, and for 14 years now, juvenile court judge. Judge Gothard has received recognition from President Ronald Reagan. He has worked tirelessly for legislation for the prevention of child abuse. Please join with me in electing Judge Saul Gothard to the Court of Appeal in Jefferson Parish. Reviews the day's most important NFL matchups and reviews the most exciting sports highlights of the week. Sunday morning on ESPN. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium where tonight an old SEC Southwest Conference rivalry gets back underway. The highly recruited and much celebrated high school recruit Harvey Williams that came to LSU ruffled some feathers in Aggie country by making that decision. 
year in and year out, Louisiana and Texas harvest top high school football talent. Many of these great athletes migrate to College Station or Baton Rouge. In 1958, Tigers running back Billy Cannon led the Tigers to the national title and a Heisman. But two decades later, son Billy said no to the Tigers and went to A&M. New York Jets running back Johnny Hector was another would-be Bayou Bengal that went to College Station. The most recent celebrated high school running back is Harvey Williams from Hempstead High School, just 40 miles outside College Station. He has all the tools, great size, speed, quickness, and power. Everyone expected Williams to join former Hempstead teammate linebacker Johnny Holland at Texas A&M. The decision that I will make, uh, the university that Harvey Williams will attend for the next four years, is LSU University. Obviously, many were shocked and upset at Harvey's decision, according to his high school coach, Robert Kinney. Oh, sure. Uh, it's a disappointment to, it's a disappointment to a lot of people, and his teammates, uh, his classmates, and, uh, but we all know he, he, had, he had to make the decision for Harvey Williams, not to, and if that's what he really wanted to do, I, the only thing I could say is good luck to Harvey. It's like everybody was like telling Harvey Williams, Harvey Williams, you know, ever since Harvey Williams came to Hempstead High, Harvey Williams going to A&M, Harvey Williams going to a &M. He was, like, programmed to go to A&M. And because Johnny, because Johnny Holland went to A&M, you know, so he just wanted to be different, I guess, just go to LSU. It was like what Bo Jackson did. Everybody suspected him to go to football, so he went baseball. I'm the kind of person, I'm an independent person, and I don't like uh, anybody making any decisions for me. So ever since I've been a freshman, I've been programmed to go to Texas A&M. So I, I thought at that time it was, it was time to make a different change. Jackie Sherrill has a problem. Not that Harvey went to LSU, but with a system that gives Williams so much attention before playing in college. The worst thing that we do in the media and as coaches, you know, we try to make and we do make personalities out of players. And I'm talking about young players, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old players before they ever become you know, a person. And I think sometimes uh, things t too quickly are possibly expected uh, some, without uh, realizing what a person goes through or has to go through. But, uh, but I, I think that's all a part of the, of the game. I mean, there are high expectations. I mean, you have high expectations of yourself. Aggies quarterback Kevin Murray was also a highly celebrated high school recruit, but he and his teammates claim Williams is cocky. I'm not going to knock the guy for what he did. I mean, he made a decision, it was his decision, you know, and he's the one that has to live with it, not me or no one else. I mean, he decided to go to LSU, so, you know, so be it. Good luck. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he responds against his hometown boys Saturday because, I mean, he's said, a, he's said a lot of few unkind things, you know, in the press, and uh, we're just going to see if he can live up to those buildings that he's uh, put in the paper. I have a lot of fans back home, and I have a lot of critics back home, too, that, that want me to to not do so well. So it's, it's half and half, you know. But most people back in Hempstead, they're for me. And those, the ones that, that I say don't, don't like me because I didn't go to Texas A&M, you know, it's, it's tough because I made my decision and that's all it is to it. Though it doesn't appear to have bothered Harvey that much, I'm joined by his father now, Harvey Williams Sr. Is it unfair the type of pressure we put on kids like your son during this recruitment? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, uh, one thing to keep in mind, this day and age, you know, uh, the young athletes coming out of high school now has a tremendous amount of peer pressure, you know, that's uh, put on them. And also, uh, I feel that each uh, young athlete, as long as he had the support of his mother and father or some loved ones uh, supporting him in anything he decided to do, I think he can, uh, you know, take the pressure. Mr. Williams, was was this a very difficult time for, for Harvey personally? And does he always set these lofty goals and make these quotes and expect uh, so much of himself? Yes, uh, he's uh, been uh, that way ever since uh, I first noticed him when he was seven years old. He started playing Pop Warner football uh, when he was seven at the age of seven. And uh, ever since that time, you know, he just decided that uh, football was uh, what he wanted to do. And uh, he just keeps setting goals for himself. And uh, so far, he's been, been reaching them. Thank you very much for joining us. And Harvey Williams, that story, well, there'll be many more, Larry and Bino. We know there will be many more where A&M and LSU are concerned. All right, Tim, and you talk about pressure. There's a lot of pressure on an 18-year-old kid to make a decision, but there's also pressure on those coaches to get the talent, and the pressure is probably no uh, hotter anywhere than it is between LSU and Texas A&M. Yeah, brief, briefly, in the 70s, LSU and Mississippi 
It was a regional game on ABC. It went to about 80% of the country, but it did not go to Houston. And Charlie McClendon, then the LSU coach, complained to Rune Arledge, president of ABC Sports. It still, the game did not go into Houston. So Houston is a recruiting area for LSU, not just Texas A&M. So they wanted that game in Houston so they could get some of those Houston recruits. All right, we're going to be going back to uh, Texas A&M and LSU, that game at Baton Rouge, Tiger Stadium. Let's go back there now, live to Tim Brando and the whole crew. They're ready here in Bayou Country, and tonight's pregame has been brought to you by Mercury, cars that have kept up with the times as much as you have. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. The fans at LSU are ready. The Tigers and Aggies are coming up from Tiger Stadium. Lincoln Mercury Mercure devours the high cost of new car financing with 2.9 annual percentage rate financing. 2.9 on Mercury Cougar, 2.9 on Topaz, 2.9 on Lynx, Capri, and Mercure XR4 Ti. Or get $300 to $1,000 cash back on select Mercury models, plus low lease terms on Lincoln's and Mercure XR4 Ti. Take advantage of low 2.9 financing now at your participating Lincoln Mercury Mercure dealer. The night has a beat of its own, a feel of its own, a beer of its own, exceptionally smooth Michelob, it could make tonight the best part of your day. LSU won the toss. They will take their option in the second half, so Texas A&M will receive the opening kickoff from Matt DeFrank, the 205-pound junior, and Rod Harris, who averaged 34.6 yards a kickoff return a year ago, is deep to receive, standing at his own three-yard line. Valentine and Taylor flank him at about the eight, and we are set to go from Baton Rouge. Frank with a high floating kick and Taylor will come up to take it at the 11. Gets it back to the 25 yard line. DeWitt down on the tackle on special teams. Kevin Murray the junior quarterback the Southwestern Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He should break all of AM's A&M's passing records for his career. Behind him in the starting backfield he has veterans Woodside and Vic. He also has talented receivers. The split end, Shea Walker, caught 30 passes a year ago. The interior line is huge. Jerry Fontenot may be the best. Marshall Land is the biggest at 340 pounds. Man in motion, and Murray is back to throw on the first play. Flips it out complete to Roger Vick. And Vick is stacked up by the swarming defense of LSU, and Michael Brooks led the charge. The defense for LSU, the front three is tough. Barbe and Wilson are quality ends. The linebackers are led, of course, by Brooks, the All-American, and by Caston. And it's a veteran secondary led by Norman Jefferson. Second down, 13 yards to go after a loss of three. Murray gives it straight up the middle to Vic, his fullback. Not much there, and once again, the center of that defense led by Toby Caston, number 69, and nose guard Henry Thomas, number 96, in on the stop for LSU. And, Pat, we are going to see a couple of great defenses tonight. Jackie Sherrill has really assembled one at A&M, &A and, of course, Bill Arnsparger, that's, that's his forte, his defense. Well, they have a lot of great athletes, a lot of experience. I think in these first two plays, we have an indication of what Texas A&M &A 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 likes to do on offense. They want to throw the short passes to their backs and run up the middle when they have an open. Third down, nine yards to go. They face now. Walker and Harris, the wide receivers, send one man in motion. Nobody back to block. Murray guns it complete. He's got the first down. He hit Walker. Walker to the 42-yard line. Rehaj and Jackson on the tackle. But Murray connected on the big third down play. Well, this is 85, Shea Walker. Now, he doesn't have blazing speed, but what he's known for is precise patterns, and he's smart within his zone. He'll find the opening, a nice throw by Kevin Murray's completion. They had the nickel coverage in that time. Greg Jackson, number 35, comes in when they go to five defensive backs, but it didn't help. And Murray showed us some of that mobility with that healthy ankle. He'll be able to get out of the pocket tonight. 
First and 10 to 42. Woodside 33 and Vic 43 are the running backs. Woodside is the man in motion. They'll give it to Vic on the toss. 45, 46-yard line upended by Nicky Hazard, the inside linebacker, after a gain of five. Roger Vick, already number nine on AM's all-time rushing list, 1,511 yards, preseason All-American choice by Playboy magazine. And here are the Aggies. Those are the officers of the day out of the Cadet Corps. They are here with the Yell leaders. Made the trip from College Station. Second down, five yards to go. Once again, this is Woodside on the toss. Same play, and Woodside's got room to run. 25-20, four-yard line. Woodside rips one off for 30. Eric Hill made the saving tackle. It was a great individual effort by Keith Woodside. He's showing us why he averaged 7.5 yards a carry last year. He breaks out of the line there, and then he cuts across the field. This is where he uses his speed and his blockers. They've broken that tackle, and he's gone the distance. Well, he is fast. Ball deep in LSU territory to 23. They'll give it to Vick straight up the middle. Vick will only get a couple that time. Number 72, Carl Wilson, the first man to get to him. Second team all SEC selection a year ago. Vick and Woodside will see a lot of action behind Murray. And this offense can do so much. They've got tremendous balance. Jackie Sherrill told us yesterday he'd like to run the ball about two-thirds of the time, pass it about a third. Nice, balanced offense. And so far, they have taken the opening kickoff and moved well on LSU. Second and eight. The motion man is Harris. Murray to throw. Good time. Throws complete to Woodside out of the backfield to the 10-yard line. He's tripped up by Norman Jefferson, but Texas A&M has a first down inside the LSU 10. Woodside can not only run it as he did the last time, but he is good out of the backfield. The native of Vidalia, Louisiana. Jackie Sherrill on the sideline. What a job he has done to Texas A&M. He has been a winner everywhere he's gone. Vic three. Brooks laying underneath him, and Nicky Hazard on top. Well, Mike, I talked to uh, Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator for LSU yesterday, and his biggest concern in this game was not only Kevin Murray's uh, scrambling ability, but Keith Woodside, not, not only on pitches, but out of the backfield. If, he get the, if they get the ball in his hands out in the open field, LSU's going to have a long night. Well, LSU strength is defense, and there is the man who has put it together, Bill Arnsparker. 10.49 to go in the opening quarter. Second down. This is Vic on the toss. Inside the five, maybe the four-yard line. Hill got him along with Caston number 69. Vic, Vic out of Tomball, Texas. Gained 764 yards last year. He was the second leading rusher on the ball club. They, of course, lost Anthony Tony. Vic has carried five times so far in this game for 16 yards. Third down, five yards to go. Murray has a man on the wing, and he wants to throw for it. Guns it in the end zone. Touchdown. A bullet pass to Shea Walker. Kevin Gidry was the closest man to it, but Walker was wide open, and Murray stuck it to his chest. It's a great call and a great throw, Pat. Well, really, uh, it's unbelievable that the defensive back would play this far off. It's just a short little out. Again, Shea has tight patterns. He runs a nice little out pattern. Easy throw, easy touchdown. Had Gidry beaten by three yards. Out from the five-yard line. You can't give up that much room. Slater is on to try the point after, and he's got it. And Texas A&M has shocked LSU with 10.06 to go in the first quarter. It's 7 to nothing, Aggies. That's my brother, Jeff Bodine, winner of the Daytona 500. He's here to talk about motor oil. Thanks, Brett. Exxon Extra motor oil. Right. Exxon Extra. It's extra good at helping block wear deep inside your engine. We also like it's... It's extra low price. Right, Jeff? Yeah, but there's one extra thing I could do without. What's that? The extra Bodine in this commercial. But, but... Extra. Just one of the quality motor oils from... From Exxon, right, Jeff? 
Have you looked at Allstate homeowners insurance rates lately? Nope. They may be lower than you think. They are low. Leave it to the good hands people. Leave it to the good hands people. Bring your policy into Allstate and compare. See how low our rates really are. Leave it to the good hands people. Wow. They're low. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Texas A&M at LSU is being brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. And by Diet Coke. Enjoy Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. Very impressive opening drive as Texas A&M puts the first seven on the board. And now we'll see something special in college football. The 12th man kickoff team for Texas A&M. These are all walk-ons. Ten of them travel with the place kicker to away games. And in the last three years, they have just done an unbelievable job. The longest return in three years is 29 yards. Nobody's gotten it back to midfield. And usually they say, Pat, there's got to be one guy on kickoff coverage that's crazy. We've got 10 out there right now. And they have 30 more at home in Texas. <laughs> right. They wish they were here. This was Jackie Sherrill's idea after he went to the Aggie bonfire. He said he never saw a spirit like they have at A&M, and he thinks this is the only place that this would work. The kickoff by Slater. Low line drive. Taken by one of the up men at the 15-yard line. And he'll get it back about 13 yards to the 28. Not one of Slater's best kicks. Ashley Eddington was the man down on special teams to make the tackle. Willie Bryant was the man who picked it up on the hop. There's Hodson coming out, the redshirt freshman quarterback. For the first play of his collegiate career, he has an above average arm. He's got a quick release. Got some good backs behind him. Martin and Jones, the starting running backs. But we will see several tonight for LSU, especially with the heat. And we'll find out in a hurry whether Tom Hodson can get the LSU offense cranking. Because obviously, Texas A&M is going to be able to put some points on the board. They'll give it to Martin. Trying to and LSU on its first offensive play gets 11 yards and a first down. Larry Kelm makes the stop. He was the number one tackler on this club a year ago. And the scoring drive was a pretty thing to see for AM fans. Four minutes, 50 seconds, 10 plays, and 75 yards. And on the last play, we have a flag down, and it's going to go against LSU. Murray to Walker completed that pretty 75-yard drive. Let's check the call. Now they're saying it is against Texas A&M and not LSU, which was the preliminary signal. Or possibly they're just trying to see whether it was a first down before they mark it off. I'm not sure. First down and then the penalty is what we understand. And they may have to measure before they uh, walk this one off. Now they're going to give them the first down. Now we'll check the penalty. Complicated life of a referee. And an announcer. <laughs> it looks like it must have been a dead ball foul then because they gave him the first down. There was a first down on the play after the ball was dead, slipping by the offense. First down, 25. Boy, that hurts. Here's the LSU offensive line, or offensive backfield behind Hodson. You have Martin and Jones. He's got some good receivers, Davis, McGee, and Kinchin. And the front five is a veteran group led by the very strong Eric Andelson. First and 25, tough place to put Hodson in, and he wants to come out throwing. Deep sideline is incomplete. Throwing down there for Wendell Davis. Chet Brook was the closest man on coverage for AM, but it was just overthrown. And that AM defense, exceptional overall. The front three can dominate. Sadler is a preseason All-American. The linebackers may be the best group in football. Holland, Howard, and Kelm could be all conference together. The secondary is good and only lacks depth. Keep an eye on Corrington. He is too small to play, but he still plays and does it brilliantly. Second and 25, LSU. Hudson has Martin and Victor Jones split behind him. They want to get the ball to Martin as much as possible. Hudson has all day and overthrows Martin. Good coverage out there by the linebacker, Todd Howard. 
who just went out and followed Martin. All four of AM's uh, linebackers can run. They're all four, six, four, five guys that cover the field. And one of the things LSU needs to do is get the ball downfield to their receivers. So they're going to have to do a good job with their offensive line, which is experience. It's one of their strengths. And Harvey Williams is into the ball game for the first time. There is Reveille, the mascot of AM. Beautiful collie. And all of the football fans in Hempstead, Texas, are watching as Harvey Williams, number 22, checks in for his first play. Puts him out of the backfield instead. They throw the other way for Victor Jones, and he is flattened by Carrington, and a flag goes down at the same time. So an inconspicuous debut for Tom Hodson and the LSU offense. And I'm sure Texas A&M will decline that penalty. It will bring up fourth down and a mile if they do turn it down. They'll bring in Matt DeFrank as the punter. Averaged 38 yards on 44 kicks a year ago. And deep to receive, Keith Woodside, number 33. There's DeFrank. Notice the snappers, number 11, Chris Carrier. He's a defensive back. I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere. And they didn't have one errant snap last year or anything mishandled. I watched him yesterday in practice. He really whips it back there. Usually it's one of those uh, big linemen with a big hand. I'll tell you one thing, he'll be able to cover the punt, though. He'll be the fastest center ever down there. He's also probably going to get stuffed at the line of scrimmage a couple of times. The Frank to kick it away. There's the perfect snap that Pat told you about. And a beautiful punt by DeFrank. Knocked the air out of Woodside. Dodging tacklers. Can't make it back past the 22. Excellent kick coverage after a 57-yard punt. We're in the first quarter in Baton Rouge, A&M, by a touchdown. Texas A&M has the football at its own 22-yard line, leading 7 to nothing. A big veteran offensive unit. Their only concern was the offensive line where they lost All-American Doug Williams and another starter. They, of course, lost uh, wide receiver Jeff Nelson, the number one pass receiver of all time in A&M history. But they've got more weapons, and Murray going downtown on first and 10 throwing for Thompson. Maybe intercepted. And it was picked off by James Pearson. Thompson. The speed burner stole it away from them after they were on the ground, but it's an interception for Pearson and something the LSU defense has to do, and that's turn it over. Well, it was a play-action pass. They went up top. All this is a straight, straight fly. He's just going deep. It's excellent coverage by Pearson. He manages to keep his body between the ball and the receiver, which is the right play. And the interesting thing about Pearson is he was academically ineligible, paid his own way to summer school, and now he's playing. A big play right there. Kid really wanted to play. And if he plays like that, they'll let him as much as he wants. 9.03 to go. The ball at the 30. They'll give it off to Jones, and Jones gets about a yard. Let's go to Larry Burnett for a scoreboard update. All right, Mike, the number two team in the country, the Miami Hurricanes, off to a good start in their game at the Orange Bowl with Texas Tech. Vinny Testaverde tossed a touchdown pass, and then this. Testaverde to Alonzo Hyatt-Smith. Nobody's going to catch him. 49 yards on the TD pass. Miami now leading 14 to nothing over Texas Tech. That game at the Orange Bowl. Of course, Miami number two in the country on the ESPN poll. Let's go back to Baton Rouge. Moss and Davis, the wide receivers on second and eight. Instead, they throw it short and they'll complete it from the 35, about the 36 yard line. And Martin Holland is all over him. It'll bring up about a third and four situation as Hodson trying to get some game experience under his belt. He had a surgery on the ulnar nerve in his throwing arm a year ago, and he said the ulnar nerve is not going to be a problem, but uh, 
his first college game, nerves might be a problem. Well, Texas A&M's defense is definitely going to be a problem also. But he threw for over 3,000 yards his senior year in high school. He can definitely put it up. Kid's got quite an arm. Third and three right here. And he wants to throw for the first down. Guns it over the middle. First down, and it's to Martin. Martin with those quick moves, and is hit from behind. Fumble. Still loose. It looked like A&M recovered, and they did. Martin, the little guy, at 165 pounds, the man they want to have the ball, and Todd Howard, number 73, the man who shook it loose from him. Now that's a tough break for LSU. Oh, turnover after big play. Sammy Martin is very quick. He's excellent out of the backfield, and watch him make some moves here. Problem is, he runs into trouble. He's very light. He's got to tuck that ball. He gets hit and stripped right there. The ball, you can see it. It wasn't under his elbow. He didn't have it in tight, and that's a turnover. Todd Howard did the job from behind. And a flag goes down before the ball is snapped as Texas A&M has it at the LSU 43. And it's going to be a procedure call against the Aggies. Miami now leading 21-0 as they play tonight. There's Sammy Martin on the sideline. 5'11", 165 pounds. They don't know how many times he can carry the ball because he is only 165. And it's a little unusual to find running backs of that weight anymore. It used to be... Uh, the, the kind of weight you'd have in scat backs, I think they called it. Well, he's a tough kid, but they don't think he can carry the ball more than 15 times a game, and that's going to hurt him eventually. First and 15, Texas A&M. They'll give it off to Woodside. Woodside hit at the line of scrimmage and swarm. Henry Thomas, number 96, was right there along with Roland Barbe, an all-SEC selection a year ago, and they stacked him up at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second down and 14 to go for Murray. Well, Murray's got to feel very comfortable back there as a quarterback. He's only a junior, and he's, he's just going to own every record in the books, and he's done just about all you could do as a quarterback, and he has so many weapons around him. Murray wants to throw. Time against the three-man rush. Tipped and intercepted. It's picked off by Ron Sancho. A 10-yard return as the sophomore from Avondale took the tip pass and puts LSU in Aggie territory. There's the heartbreaker for a quarterback. He actually hit the receiver in the hands. He didn't get his fingertips over the tip of the ball. They went up, tip drill, picked off by Sancho. Really, those shouldn't go down as interceptions for a quarterback. That's a receiver's fault. He's got to get those fingertips over the edge of the ball and pull it in. That was Keith Woodside out of the backfield, and there is a look at Murray. With three turnovers in the space of about 45 seconds. 7.02 to go. First half. LSU in good territory. This is McGee in motion. They'll give it to Martin, and a flag goes down. I don't think they got the play off in time. LSU cannot afford to have these penalties all the time on first down. There's a lot of pressure on their offense to move the ball, and they can't keep starting first and 25, first and 15. It's killing them. And it's a procedure penalty against LSU. It'll put them back at... First and 15. It's the one thing you don't, don't want to do to a redshirt freshman quarterback is continually have him in, in long yardage situations. Or to offensive coordinators. Neither of them like it. I think part of the problem is it is his first game. There's a different cadence. They've had a back move, a lineman move. They've got to be. They've got to get over these jitters quickly, though. Hodson out of Matthews replaces Jeff Wickersham, who threw for a lot of yards in his LSU career. First and 15, and the crowd. Almost 78,000 strong, just waiting to erupt. Hudson deep sideline has his man out there. That's Davis. Davis inside the 25 to the 23 yard line where Jeff Holly had to knock him out of bounds. Davis out of Shreveport, the leading returning receiver with 31 catches. This time he got one for 30 yards. Well, this is just an excellent throw. Perfectly right on the line by Hudson. He split a zone. Wendell Davis was picked up short by his own man then picked up deep and he found the pocket and it's just a perfect throw it's tough to defense that play that's the toughest throw in football first down LSU at the A&M 22 yard line Derek Salisbury number 28 another one of those freshmen in at wide receiver Bill Arnsparger has a lot of freshmen look out for the end around and this is it they got Salisbury into the ball game and immediately got him the football a little dipsy do. 12 yards for Salisbury. Well, for LSU to win this game, they've got to have some big plays. And in the round is one of the big ones. 
It's very difficult to break this all the way from the 30-yard line, however, because pursuit comes in. But when you pick up 10 yards, that's successful. First and 10, LSU. Arnsparger already into the bag of tricks. They'll give it to Martin. Martin inside the five to the four-yard line. Torrington had to come up from the free safety spot to make the tackle. Along with Johnny Holland, the All-American linebacker, as Bill Arnsparger watches his team driving for what could be the tying touchdown. If you were Texas A&M's defensive coordinator right now, wouldn't you be a little bit surprised? Uh, really? Well, they were worried coming in. They really didn't know what to expect with two, two new uh, running backs and a quarterback. And they do have the weapons out of wide receiver. If they can get Sammy Martin to get some successful runs, they're going to move the ball because they have good wide receivers. Garland Jean-Baptiste, number 44, checks in at fullback as they go with a two-tight end offense. Ronnie Halliburton also in there. Martin is the deep man in the eye, and Martin has it on the toss. Not much room to run, but he got the most out of it, even picking up a yard. And who made the tackle? Again, Kip Corrington, the free safety, after he'd gotten by number 65, Larry Kelm. They strung the play out pretty well. One of the problems running against AM is they're so fast, as I alluded to earlier. They have speed all over the field, and if you run laterally, you're not going to pick up many yards. Of course, it's a little tough to run right up uh, right up the gut against them, too, because they're so big and strong. I'm surprised they didn't go with uh, play action down here. In this uh, part of the field, it's much more effective than running wide. Having all sorts of problems with the clock right now. That's why we have it stopped. We'll have to go by the uh, sideline markers as the uh, clock uh, is now being set back to where it should be. And they're running it back down, and the down and distance markers are not working up on the clock. But LSU has been able to move it inside the Texas A&M 5, and it will be third down. And about two yards to go. This is the renewal of a rivalry that started in 1899. And what's so interesting about these clubs is they all recruit in the same place. And these are high school teammates. For example, Holland and Williams both went to the same high school, but Holland goes to Texas A&M, and of course, the celebrated Williams goes to LSU. So you get a lot of uh, guys who played together, who were teammates, who end up now being uh, enemies at least for the length of a football game. And eight Louisiana residents going to A&M, 13 Texans playing at LSU. Hudson so far, three out of six, 42 yards. He's done a good job. Here's Harvey Williams on the sideline. He's only been in for one play, did not touch the ball. 6'2", 205, a lot of speed. Very confident young man in his own ability. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, when you compare yourself uh, to Bo before you've even carried a ball, Heisman Trophy winner, you definitely are confident. Tell you what, if I was that big and could run that fast, I'd be confident too. They're still working on the clock right now as Hodson is at the sideline talking with Bill Lawrence Parker and the coaching staff. Well, if I was a wide receiver for LSU, uh, either Wendell Davis or Raji McGee, I'd be praying that A&M played the same defense as LSU did uh, for their touchdown. Play off me in the end zone. Let me just run a five-yard pattern and That's score right. an easy touchdown. It's third down and about two yards to go. LSU and Texas A&M both with 76 total yards in the first quarter, so it has not been an offensive mismatch. And now they've gone back to a minute and now inside a minute again, and I'm really not sure what they're trying to get down to. But they've passed it three times, whatever it is. Ball spotted at the three and a half, and, and Pat, does this uh, delay hurt, hurt the LSU offense? I mean, they had the momentum going. Well, it is frustrating when you have momentum. At the same time, it gave their offensive coordinator a little more time to think over play. If I were them right now, uh, being on the left hash mark, I think I'd have to roll Hudson out to the right, have an option run pass, try to get your tight end deep in the end zone, your wide receiver uh, to come back at the flag, try to spread him out and sneak in the end zone if you can, pass it if he's open. The starting tight end is uh, Brian Kinchin, number 49. We'll keep an eye on him. Only caught four passes all of last year, but is a good receiver, has good hands. He's a local product out of Baton Rouge. Clock is now down to uh, six seconds, and we'll see what they do with it this time. I'll tell you. Well, they've taken it down to zero again and back up to 5.58 and counting down. They can't stop this silly thing. So we'll check out the clock situation when we come back. It's 7 nothing a and This is a full-size Chevy. That's a full-sized Ford. That Ford's got a six. This Chevy is equipped with a V8. But did you know that Ford 6 is priced $147 more than this Chevy with a V8? So ask yourself, would you rather have the Ford or the Chevy? Simple. 
unless you don't care about money. Now the big one. Get 2.9% financing or up to $750 cash rebates on most new 86 Chevy trucks. Ed, old buddy, we're really in a bind. Suppose you could postpone that vacation a couple weeks. I need a vacation. Ed, we got a new problem here. I need a vacation. Just came up, Eddie. In fact, everyone else is on vacation. If you couldn't get away this summer, you can still get United's great low fares to more places this fall. We're the biggest bargain airline in the land. I got a vacation. Ed, Eddie, where is he? I'm not just flying. Eagle for coffee. I'm flying the friendly skies. Back in Tiger Stadium, Tim Brando on the sidelines. The problem they're having with the clock is getting the numeral five on the minute side. Now they're, having, they're not having any difficulty with the seconds, only the minutes. And this is an area of the field where Brian Kenton, the LSU tight end, could be on the receiving end. I'm wondering what you might think, Pat McAnally. I agree with that. I would go to him. I think it's a good chance. Whenever you get down in tight, inside the five-yard line, tight end with a big body can be open without having to have space between himself and the defender. So I think tight ends. We used to go to Danny Ross quite a bit in Cincinnati, and it's very effective around the uh, league. The scoreboard now says, hello, ref, pick up the phone. And if they're trying to get down to five minutes and something uh, in the first quarter, we still have three minutes to go. Oh, it was a great start. Three turnovers in 45 seconds, a couple of big, long drives. We're back up to seven minutes and 50 seconds now. <laughs> it's got to be very frustrating for... Uh, for players standing there waiting to make plays and not having the opportunity to do it. I'll tell you, when I was in the pros, punting, I hated it when a quarter would end or they'd have a TV timeout. You're really ready to play. You're psyched up mentally. Physically, you want to go. They had momentum, and now they've had to wait five or ten minutes, and it's this is a big, big play for them. Let's go back down to Tim on the sideline. Tim? Mike, we do have some good news. We've been waiting for some time. We thought it was going to be 558. I don't know if it's because they're having difficulty getting five, the numeral five, up there or not. But they tell us now they will stop the clock with six minutes and nine seconds left. You have to wonder now how must how must this Tiger team feel? How many times can they go over this one play that has been designed to get two yards and a touchdown? They still have all oh, about another minute or so in which to win. Tell you what, Tim, uh, I think all of us who've been around offensive coaches who would use all this time, they probably haven't sent the play in yet. I wish I'd have brought a book up here. I could have finished a couple <laughs> chapters at least. Speed reading. You were talking about TV timeouts. How many of those did you have at Harvard? <laughs> hey, we got on regional TV twice. What do you did mean? Did you? Yeah, against and you Brown were player of the game at least once, weren't you? Now, two times I sent in heavy ballots. All my friends sent them in. <laughs> There's Jean Baptiste, who has just checked in uh, the play before this. And a good look at Tom Hodson, the redshirt freshman quarterback. Seen several teams this year go with a redshirt freshman quarterback and uh, coaches apparently deciding against experience and on natural talent. Don't forget, be with us uh, next Saturday, September 20th. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. Larry and Bino will host the Lincoln Mercury College Football Scoreboard Show. And then at 7.30, Penn State takes on Boston College. BC won, of course, today to even their record at 1-1. One and one. Immediately following the game, stay tuned for the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report. Larry and Bino will be back for that. And the clock has now gone back to zero. Somebody go out and buy a stopwatch, and let's get it going. That's ridiculous. I've never seen it. The referees should just be counting down. They should have a watch on their own. They should ignore the scoreboard. It's not that I important. I think that's what they've done. The, the scoreboard setting at 0-0. Zero, zero. And let's go back to Tim. Maybe he can tell us what's going on. Well, they're having so many problems, Mike and Pat, that they've decided just to leave the clock alone, put it at zero, keep the uh, time official with the officials down here. We'll try to keep you posted. Now they're back underway. Excellent choice on their part. It's third and two from the three-and-a-half-yard line. Martin in motion. Sets out on the wing. They'll send McGee back to the near side. It is play action. Hudson goes. He hit Sammy Martin, and Sammy Martin was wide open, and Pat, they did it with the motion. Well, that's effective. A lot of times, if, if you need two or three yards for first down or touchdown, if you can put a flanker or a halfback in motion, he gets a step on the defender, and if you get the good throw and the timing's there, it's a touchdown. That's what happened there. It was perfect timing. Pretty darn good throw for a rookie quarterback. It was perfect, and Sammy Martin gets the first touchdown of the 1986 season for LSU. Ron Lewis who was 27 out of 27 in points after, comes on, drills this one, and a flag is down. 
procedure, LSU. And they'll have to try it again. I guess you could say LSU went into their eight-minute offense on that play. <laughs> Just about. Take a look again at Martin as they set him on a wing and then sent a man in motion, and it looked like somebody just got lost on the coverage. One of the difficulties down in the red zone, deep inside the 10-yard line, is picking up every man. A lot of times the defenders will get picked or they won't be able to stay with the guy and it's a touchdown. I think that's what happened. He got picked. They'll mark off five yards against LSU, so this is now a 25-yard extra point by Ron Lewis, the junior from New Orleans. And five yards made no difference at all. He pumps it through. And with 6.06 left to go in the first half, we've tied it up. And there is after he threw the first touchdown pass of his college career. Hey, Vern. Boy, Vern, this must be the highest point in Louisiana. Speaking of high, I heard about that electric bill of yours. Burn, gas beats these all electric homes every time. Well, I've comparisized it and analyzed it. Gas, electric, electric, gas. And it's like they say at LGS, gas works for less. So, Vern, switch to gas and bring your energy costs back down to earth. Know what I mean? Burn, I, oh, burn. Richard Petty talks about his all-time driving headaches. Daytona 76, that was definitely a goodie. Charlotte 72, that was another goodie. Michigan 84, that was a real goodie. I've won over 200 races, but I've had over 700 headaches. So just take it from me, goodies get rid of the pain fast. And that's what counts. Goodies headache powders and extra strength tablets. the day's most important NFL matchups and reviews the most exciting sports highlights of the week, Sunday morning on ESPN. Larry Burnett back here in the ESPN studios. Illinois and USC playing at the Coliseum. The Trojans have gone ahead in that game. Illinois led 6-0 on two Chris Ciambico's field goals. Third and goal here for the Trojans. Aaron Emanuel takes the handoff. Little second effort gets him over for the touchdown. The point after touchdown was good. 7-6 now. USC leading that game is in the second quarter. Let's go back to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Thank you very much, Larry. We've got a beauty here. 7-7 first quarter. Approximately six minutes to go in the first period. And there's Matt DeFrank, who will kick it away. Rod Harris standing at his own three-yard line. So LSU has answered the one question that a lot of people had about this ball club. Can they move the ball? And if that drive is any indication, yes, they can. DeFrank's first kick only got to about the 11-yard line as we kick off from the 35, of course, in college this year. Got more of this one. Taking it to five-yard line. Back up to about the 22 goes Anthony Taylor. One of the up men on kick coverage after a 17-yard return. And the scoring drive for LSU took only 56 seconds. Five plays, 48 yards. And Hodson got his first touchdown pass of his college career. That's got to make that young man feel a lot better. Texas A&M will come out and start from its own 22. We thank you for the greeting here at Baton Rouge, the home of great food, and dogs named Fido that are spelled P-H-I-D-E-A-U-X. Give it straight up the middle, and Vic is going absolutely nowhere. Carl Wilson, the right end, made the stop. One thing A&M has to do, they have to get a drive here. I don't care how confident you are as a quarterback, and Kevin Murray is a confident athlete. He's had two interceptions, both of them questionable type interceptions for quarterback, but he needs to move the ball right now. Texas A&M will face a second and about eight, and the scoreboard uh, has just stopped functioning altogether. Vic and Woodside are the running backs. This is Woodside across the 25, 26, maybe 27-yard line. Carl Wilson, number 72, and Henry Thomas, number 96, in on this stop. We talk a lot about A&M's linebackers, and they have some great ones, but uh, LSU has, of course, Michael Brooks, but to Toby Kasten's very underrated, and the other guys, Eric Hill beat out Ron Sancho, who had made uh, All-America as a freshman last year. That's right. They are loaded on defense, both clubs, but the offenses are so good right now that they have both scored in the first half. Third down, about five yards to go. And Murray wants to throw against a three-man rush. Eight men back in coverage. Dumps it off to Vic, his fullback. 
gets to the 32, tripped up by Nicky Hazard. And depending on the spot, he is very, very close. One of the key matchups in this game will be number 77, Marshall Landis. Huge. And he's going to be going against Roland Barbe, also number 77. Right here, he takes him on, but that's definitely holding. Got away with that one. But I know that they're very concerned about him doing his own. He's Land, got to hold his own. Land's a great story. Signed with Texas Tech. Did not play there. Went to junior college for a couple of years. Came here. Has been up to 392. Right now, he is a svelte 347 at 6'6". All in all, the guy is big enough to have bolts in his neck. <laughs> First down and 10 for AM. And they'll toss it to Woodside. No, sir. Chris Carrier was the last man to get there, but Daryl Phillips, number 62, and Roland Barbe and Nicky Hazard were all there on the tackle. Land, even though he has only played 17 snaps last year, has pro potential, according to Jackie well, Sherrill. He has very quick feet. They're very uh, impressed with his ability to move his feet at that size. I'll tell you something. When he ran for ASB president in junior college, the guy was 380 pounds. Would you have voted against him? No, sir. He's going for his master's and Ph.D. in sociology. So if you didn't, uh, if you were afraid not to vote for him, he can still talk you into it. Murray's back to throw over the middle. Hits Thompson. Gets across the 40. He'll be shy of the first down. Hazard again in on the tackle. He replaces the only uh, non-returning linebacker, Sean Burks, who was the number one tackler on the club a year ago. AM's bread and butter are short control passes to their backs or their receivers underneath. That's why I was surprised to see him go up top early and they had that interception. I'm sure they'll return to that type of offensive thinking, the short stuff. Rod Bernstein, number 29, has not caught a pass, and they like to use him in that uh, control passing game. He caught six in the Cotton Bowl. Well, that was one of the keys to that game was he uh, he really opened up uh, the rest of the receivers in the running game, and they, I know they want to get the ball to number 29, Bernstein. LSU has called a timeout, and again, uh, we apologize for the fact that we cannot give you the time remaining in the quarter. The scoreboard clock has not been working for several minutes either on down and distance most of the time or the time left. We told you a minute ago about Sean Burks, who was lost to the Texas A&M defense. Neither of these clubs lost much on defense. Texas A&M did lose an outstanding player, Domingo Bryant, in the secondary, but uh, their biggest losses uh, came in wide receiver and running back and an All-American offensive lineman, Doug Williams. LSU lost a big chunk of their offense with Dalton Hilliard, Gary James, and Jeff Wickersham, both running backs and the starting quarterback. But apparently, uh, Bill Arnsparger wasn't trying to do a number on us when he told us, hey, we've got some talent back there. We can still move the ball. Now, he scoffed at me when I said, you've got a young uh, backfield. Are you going to go conservative tomorrow night? And he said, no, we like the people we have. We have confidence in our quarterback. And our running backs played a lot last year. They didn't run up a lot of stats, but we're confident they can pick up the blitzes and they can run the ball. And I think he's right. It is a Saturday football night in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where they love their football as much or more than anybody in the country. Murray has not had a pass hit the ground yet. Five teammates have caught it. Two LSU players have caught it. Third down and about two. Big play here, Murray on the option. Got it back to Woodside. Room to run. Got to the 45-yard line. Diving tackle by Eric Hill who saved an even bigger gain, but it's going to be a first down for the Aggies of a &M. Woodside really came on at the end of 1985. The young man has some speed and moves, and Jackie Sherrill has filled this team with quality athletes, and that's what you have to have to consistently win programs. And look at this. Their average on first down, only 1.4 yards, but it's early. First and 10 a &M. Murray, four-man rush this time, quickly over the middle. Come Bernstein. to Bernstein. They finally got the tight end of the football, and he's into LSU territory at the 36, where Steve Rehage had to make the tackle, the strong safety. Rod Bernstein is a big part of this offense. I know in 86, they want to get the ball to him early. In the games, they want to open up the defenses with him underneath because he can really run. He was running back in high school. <laughs> he sure held the ball loose there, didn't he? <laughs> he looked like a running back yes, right there. 20-yard gain. Bernstein averaged 13-9 a catch a year ago. First and 10, Texas A&M. They'll send Thompson out to the far side as a wide receiver. Give it to Vick. Vick down to the 30, driven out of bounds. Good hit down there by Pearson. Let's check in in the studio with Larry Burnett for a scoreboard update. 
All right, gentlemen, let's check in on some games that are in progress tonight. First of all, Texas Tech going at number two, Miami. That game in the Orange Bowl. The Canes lead at 21 to nothing. It's in the first. Also in the first, number 15, Baylor. A scoreless tie now with Louisiana Tech in the first. In the first quarter, it is number 19, Arkansas, on top of Mississippi. The score there is 7 to nothing. And USC is leading Illinois 7 to 6 in the second. Let's go back to Baton Rouge. Second down, about three yards to go. Murray looks like he may be changing the play. Puts Woods out on a win. Wants to throw the quick pass near side. And completes it out there to Shea Walker. And Walker is inside the 25-yard line for another first down. Caston was over there to make the tackle along with Chris Carrier, but it's enough to get the first down. That's a veteran play by the quarterback and Shea Walker. They've worked a lot together. They saw what appeared to be a blitz look. They just audible down to a quick little hitch pattern, easy completion. But the penalty will nullify the play as it goes against A&M, and Jackie Sherrill's not going to be happy about that. We were talking to Jackie yesterday. He is not shy or modest about the people he recruits. You were talking about how great his athletes are. Remember he told us yesterday that uh, everyone but one player on his first 20 defensive players would be in the NFL within a couple of years. Well, I think uh, I think he said uh, 10 of the starting 11 and then started pointing at backup guys and said they'll be in there. And, of course, uh, you know, I don't think coaches are going to say that if they don't really believe it. And I'll bet you that Jackie Sherrill's right. I bet those guys end up there. I know one thing. He doesn't have to pay the contracts. Second down, nine yards to go. Ira Valentine checks in at fullback for the first time. He's number 42. And he'll get the ball on the draw. Valentine to the 30. 27 yard line. Lawrence got a piece of him and knocked him down. Carrier was over to help out. Valentine out of Marshall, Texas. A senior, 200 pounds. Carried the ball only 30 times last year. Fastest guy in the team. He runs a 4.42. We're getting down to field goal territory, and it might be a problem for Texas A&M. The regular place kicker, Eric Franklin, is out with a stress fracture in his foot. And we'll have to see which one of two backup place kickers, either Slater or Talbot, would take his place if they go for the field goal situation. Third down, about two yards to go. And they've got the first down inside the 25-yard line as Valentine stopped by Lawrence. Texas A&M, very impressive. They don't uh, hesitate to go to the bench, bring in those second and third team backs, and they can all do the job. It makes you wonder sometimes when coaches go to a program that has struggled and they can turn it around the way Jackie Sherrill has. There's just about 10 of them that seem to be able to win anywhere. Look at what Lou Holtz did today at Notre Dame. Almost pulled the major upset. Lou Holtz is going to win wherever he goes. First and 10, A&M. Murray wants to throw for it. Very cool in the pocket throw is complete. He's got Shea Walker again, this time down to the 12-yard line. Pearson is in on the tackle. Also, Chris Carrier, but Murray just stands back there. Very cool and drills it. 96, Henry Thomas. He's a great player, but when you're being double teamed all over the field, it's awful tough to get pressure. But if they have to double team him, they will eventually get some people in there and put some pressure on Murray. Calvin Whitfield, number 54, who's the backup right guard, and Matt Wilson, the starting center, number 50, on pass protection. It is another first down for Texas A&M, and Murray needs to call a timeout, but there is a flag down, and we'll check the flag. He may not have called the timeout in time before the 25-second clock is fired. And it's a procedure call against A&M. And they've got the timeout on top of it. And now they're explaining it to Jackie Sherrill. Jackie Sherrill, when he was talking to us yesterday, he was so excited about the tradition at Texas A&M and the spirit of the school, the things he saw when he went down there. And it, it's nice to see somebody happy where they are. Well, he, uh, there was a lot of tradition there, a lot of crazy people there, but the reason they're winning on the football field now is he recruits athletes as well as anyone in the country. He, sure he can look at a high school kid and he'll find another position for him. And I think that's, uh, that's what makes him a winner. Well, he took a couple of people that uh, were not linebackers, made them linebackers, uh, somebody like Holland. He's only played there two years, and uh, Jackie Sherrill says for the two years he's played there, he's been the best linebacker in the country. All-America linebacker, and he was a high school quarterback. And then they moved him to free safety, and they found a spot for him, a linebacker, and he's one of the best in the country. That's foresight. One thing A&M has been able to do so far, Pat McAnally, is control Michael Brooks. He's not made the big play against him. No, we have not heard his name much. And right now, Michael Brooks is not in the ballgame. 
And Murray is going out to change the play and listen to the crowd on first and 15. They try to get him with the blitz. He throws for the end zone, overthrown. Tried to hit Walker out there on coverage was Jefferson. I think teams uh, often embody the spirit of their coach. And Jackie Sherrill, uh, he, we came in and we said, I know that you know there's going to be a lot of noise here. He said, I don't hear the noise. I didn't hear it when I was a player and I played here, and I don't expect our players to have problems. And right there, all they did was uh, signal out to the receiver, and they got the ball off on time. Murray is 7 out of 10. Two interceptions, though, 74 yards. And the touchdown. Again, we're still in the first quarter. It must be under a minute by now. Second and 15. They'll give it to Vic, the fullback up the middle, to about the 13-yard line, and he is stuffed by Oliver Lawrence. Lawrence splitting times uh, with Nikki Hazard at that inside linebacker spot. One thing LSU came into this game knowing they were going to have to do is take away those short passes. And the way to do that is to play a man coverage with your five underneath your linebackers. Give your three deep guys a zone. That is the end of the first quarter. Our score here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, LSU 7 and Texas A&M 7. Quietly, with very little noise. One soft drink has risen all the way to the top to become America's number one caffeine-free cola. Caffeine-free Diet Coke. It's the soft drink more and more people are quietly enjoying. Caffeine-free Diet Coke. Try it. Ah. Just for the taste of it. Caffeine-free Diet Coke. The way cheap phones break down, the companies that make them must do some pretty interesting tests. I hear you. Hear me? I hear you. I heard something. Real torture tests. And ring tests. I heard it. What did you hear? I heard it. I didn't hear it. Are you sure you heard it? I heard it. Well, for over a hundred years, AT&T's made phones that pass the real test. You. It's nothing. I dropped the phone. You get what you pay for. AT&T, the right choice. If you've ever wondered why Snyder's is the pretzel, just taste that sourdough flavor and you'll never wonder again. Got enough Mr. Wrongs, get the right spray. Of Mr. Wrong. I want to be with Mr. Right. Mr. Right. In North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Then the final critical step, the Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it. Well, there's your typical LSU fan. At least he spelled it right. <laughs> I tell you, that's why I went to college. <laughs> Good to have those kind of fans. But you went side. to Harvard and went to class. <laughs> Big play here. Third down, 12 yards to go for Texas A&M. Two wide receivers to the near side, and Murray says, I can't hear to call signals. He walked away from center, and Matt Wilson, the center, was still over center. Now, what about the rule on this, Pat? Well, they've changed it. If uh, they continue doing this, it'll eventually be a penalty against LSU. And so uh, I don't know how they're going to control the crowd, but uh, well, that'll light them up, wouldn't it? <laughs> Phil Arnsbarger is going to have to go out there with a megaphone and tell them to be quiet or something. I don't know, but I think that's a good rule. I think it's ridiculous when a team can't run a play at line it, of scrimmage. It's something they had to do because the fans realized how much power they had over the game. <laughs> so it's still third and 12. We're in a 7-7 game. Mike Patrick, Pat McAnally, and Tim Brando. Glad you could be with us. Listen to these guys. Murray to throw all day over the middle. Touchdown! Rod Bernstein, the tight end, covered by Jefferson, but not well enough, and Murray drilled him. Boy, is Murray something. Well, it's not bad having a tight end that can run like Rod Bernstein. As we mentioned earlier, he was a running back. He's really fast. 
this is unusual for a tight end. He's out of wide receiver. He releases outside, and now he'll just run across the middle of the field. Murray finds him with an excellent throw. It's very difficult to defend a tight end when he's out of wide receiver. It really confuses me. Scott Slater on to try the point after. Knocks it through. Murray, 8 out of 11, two touchdowns, two interceptions, 87 yards, and Texas A&M, on the strength of his arm, has taken a 14-7 lead. Designs that work are designs that last, and a Delta washerless faucet lasts and lasts and lasts. When it's on, it's on, and when it's off, it's off. So it works just as beautifully as it looks. Enduring designs by Delta for the beautiful designs that you live in. Delta Fawcett, we're first because we last. The pure, natural beauty of glass comes only from the purest sand. One of the few inexhaustible natural resources. And glass can be recycled again and again to bring you more and more of the good things that come in glass, just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers, naturally. Tonight's game between Texas A&M and LSU is being brought to you by AC Delco, the smart parts. Texas A&M leading LSU with 14.55 to go in the second quarter. Scoring drive of 78 yards. The second scoring drive of the first half where Texas A&M has gone virtually the length of the field. The first was 75. This one ate up six minutes and 11 seconds on the clock and resulted in a 13-yard touchdown pass from Murray who has two TD passes and two interceptions here in the first half. One of those interceptions certainly not his fault as it was tipped, and the other was a great play by the defense. Well, as we said LSU's, before that drive, uh, receiving team. I'm sorry, Pat, go ahead. As we said before that drive, I think it was important for AM to reestablish themselves. They were able to mix up the run and the passes, and they brought Bernstein in, and the next time they get the ball, I think uh, it'll help Vic and uh, Woodside on the runs. If you got a tight end that's getting open, it really opens up the defense. This is Tony Moss, the young man, the redshirt freshman out of Bossier City. He goes back with number 33, 84, who's standing at the near sideline to await the kick of Scott Slater and Texas A&M's 12th man kickoff coverage team. These guys could be the best coverage team in all of football, not just college. I mean, they don't allow anything. All walk-ons. And they just love the chance to get down there. Moss at the 10. Got some room outside if he can make it, but he's tripped up at the 17-yard line. Ronnie Glenn, number nine, the man who got him. And they just cover those kicks beautifully. Now let's see this touchdown again. And this play, Kevin Murray has all day. You give a veteran quarterback this much time to look over the field, he's going to have a touchdown. That's exactly what he did. He found Rod Bernstein wide open in the end zone, hit him right in the numbers. Easy score. They'll mark the ball near the 18-yard line. LSU will take over. And they've got Harvey Williams in the ball game as a tailback behind Garland Jean Batiste. Williams 22, Batiste 44. Both wide receivers to the near side of the field for quarterback Hodson. And they'll give it off to Williams. Williams hit at the 21-yard line by Johnny Holland, who stood him straight up. But Williams had the strength to get about another yard. And those guys both out of Hempstead High School. Well, it's not often you get to tackle a teammate, a teammate of yours from high school. Holland's just a great linebacker. He has great lateral movement, and he meets him head on. Oh, that's a big hit. I'll tell you, Williams is not only fast, but he's very strong. They think he can go inside, outside, anywhere on the field he wants to, and I think he's going to. Tony Moss, number six, back in for LSU at a wide receiver spot, and they'll send two wide receivers to the near side. Moss and 82, Wendell Davis. Second down, six yards to go for the Tigers. Watson wants to throw. Plenty of time. Near side. Is it caught? It is. And it was Wendell Davis coming back 
flowers all over him, but a perfect throw. Let's check in right now with Larry Burnett and the scoreboard update. All right, Mike, you've got a good one there. Illinois and Southern Cal have a good one going on at the L.A. Coliseum. With just under a minute left in the second quarter, it was 9-7 Illinois, but Rodney Pete gets a lot of time. He throws to Ken Henry, and watch this play. He gets it. Now, does he get in the end zone? They said he did. It was 14-9 USC. That's the score at half. First and 10, LSU, and Martin nailed in the backfield. Didn't get a foot as Rod Sadler, the preseason All-American, stuffed him. There is a flag down, however, on the play. Here's the preliminary signal. And it's going to be a hold against LSU. Rod Sadler showing uh, not only great strength, his strength, but also his speed. He was in the backfield before the running back even took a step. Well, you'd hope if they uh, held Sadler, or they, they wouldn't have held Sadler because they didn't do a very good job on it. <laughs> 82 tackles, four sacks a year ago. Some tremendous defensive statistics for this front seven that comes back intact. They're so strong in that front three. Here's the call. And it's declined because of the know. loss on the play. So it'll bring up second and about 15 for LSU. Williams checks back in the ball game as Martin goes to the sideline, and we'll probably see that alternation all, all night long. They'll send Raji McGee, the flanker, to the top of your screen, and Davis, number 82, to the near side. Second and 15. Little trap play inside the Williams. They'll break it for about six yards to the 34-yard line. Kip Corrington up from the safety makes the tackle. Williams, 6'2", 205 out of Hempstead, Texas. One thing Bill Arnsbarger said about uh, young Mr. Williams is he runs a little too upright right now. He's got to learn to get his shoulders underneath the, uh, and break some tackles. You know, when you're so fast a lot of times, all you want to do is get your head back and run. And I think he's going to have to learn against these bigger players he's going to encounter in college. He's going to have to get under their pads to uh, progress forward. Third down, nine yards to go. We'll go out of the shotgun with Hodson. But Hodson doesn't like what he sees on defense in the shotgun formation, and he'll burn another LSU timeout. 12.38 to go in the half. Texas A&M leads by a touchdown. I've been shot at, shot up, and shot down. So I don't take chances on anything. I won't touch a filter that isn't from AC. Why mess with air filters that can't go for up to 30,000 miles, or oil filters that can't deliver up to 15,000? For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. If you put your muscle into a job, use your head and do it with AC Delco. Fact. Americans are investing their money in unprecedented numbers. Fact. Investing is easy. Making money is hard. Fact. If you're not a professional, you're an amateur. Before you invest, talk to a professional. Ask a securities broker about the investment products of Kemper Financial Services, mutual funds, money market funds, unit trusts, life insurance and annuities, real estate. Kemper Financial Services, a concern for your future. The LSU cheerleaders with 12.38 to go in the first half have seen their club fall behind 14-7 and facing a third and nine situation from their own 34. Moon over Baton Rouge. How did we do that? Two timeouts left for Texas A&M. That's why there's so many lunatics out here. Either that's a small moon or a very large football. Third and nine for Hanson. Both wide receivers to the far side of the field, the wide side, and Hanson against the four-man rush under pressure. Stepped up in the pocket but couldn't make it. And he is dropped on a blitz by... Adam Bob, who comes into the ball game, who was supposed to be wearing number 24, but is out there in number 23 right now, the sophomore linebacker. And Jackie Sherrill has got depth at linebacker you wouldn't believe. He's got about eight guys he thinks can play anywhere. Matt DeFrank will go back to punt it. And Woodside is deep to receive at his own 33. DeFrank not as high this time, and Woodside lets it bounce. And he rolls inside the 30-yard line. Woodside may have made a mistake on that one, letting it hit, but he got away with it. It did not take a big bounce. Texas A&M 14, LSU 7, back in a moment. 
<laughs> Just like that, this AC copper core spark plug can fire 30 times. That's the firepower today's high revving car engines need. What about your plugs? If they can't fire for up to 30,000 miles, oh! Maybe you're missing out on peak performance. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. Wait for trouble, and you've got it. In these days of microcomponent technology, you can find office copiers that do almost anything. Some duplex, sort, automatically reduce and enlarge. Can I use your copier? It's down again. Try 23. Thanks. Some collate and margin shift. Is your copier working? Sorry. Oh, terrific. But at Rico, we found that the most popular feature our copiers deliver is that our copiers deliver. Rico, copiers built to work and work and work. LSU defensive lineman Roland Barbet joins the fight against drugs. Participating in sports, whether on a college or professional level, seems to be a one-time thing. It's a very enjoyable experience, and I've liked it a lot. I feel very blessed to be a part of it. I think there's one thing that can really cut your time short is participating in drugs. Drugs really do not have a place in sports, and I think it's really not worth the time or the effort to try experience with them. The preceding brought to you by the College Football Association. Now the Tiger will have to turn around and go back on defense with 11.51 to go in the first half. Texas A&M's football at its own 31-yard line, leading 14-7. Murray has the backs in the eye, and he'll give it to Woodside, who is leveled. Carl Wilson planted him in the backfield. What a shot. Well, Keith Woodside had a nice welcome into LSU territory right here. Carl Wilson's very underrated. He was an honorable mention All-America last year, and he was hurt most of the year. He was a sophomore All-America the year before, and he's going to have a big year. He definitely introduced himself. Well, Woodside doesn't underrate him, I guarantee you that. Second and 11 as they had a loss of a yard. Harris, the man in motion. Big pressure on Murray this time. They chase him Sabbath. out of the pocket. He throws sideline complete to Woodside. 50, 46 yard line of LSU. Brought down by Nicky Hazard, the linebacker. And the offices of the day out of the core of cadets really enjoying it for Texas A&M. Boy, Murray is just really cool. You chase him out of the pocket, it doesn't seem to bother him at all. That's the thing. Kevin Murky, Mur Murray has a healthy ankle now. He rolls and he buys himself some time. Woodside's waving both arms. He wants the ball. He catches it, breaks inside, picks up another 15, 20 yards. 24-yard gain on that play. First and 10. They'll give it to Valentine on the toss. Valentine slips as he crosses the 45. Got to about the 43-yard line. Steve Rehaj on top of him. Nobody knows the frustration of being so wide open that you have time to wave your arms. And so seldom do you get the ball. I know Keith Woodside is thanking his lucky stars that Murray found him and hit him with that ball. Now you get the feeling Murray is going to find the open receivers. He's got a lot of time. LSU is going to have to start blitzing. They've got to, they can't let him sit back there and pick him apart. Which is one thing they've done so well with Brooks in the past. They've not been bringing him a lot. They've stopped the running game, but they're not stopping the passing game. Second down, seven yards to go here. Valentine and Woodside the backs, and Murray gets it out to Valentine. Nice move inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Rehaj again on the tackle. Out of Metairie, Louisiana, he's had a busy night so far. Valentine made that first quick little move, got him another six, seven yards. Well, this shows the depth, the depth of Texas A&M. I heard Valentine's a backup receiver, and here he comes in against Michael Brooks, consensus All-American. He just faked him right out of his uniform. That's a great move. Well, you get by Brooks, uh, you're not only good, but you better be thankful, too. First and 10, Texas A&M. Woodside, the man in motion. They'll give it to Valentine, the remaining back, and Valentine stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Toby Caston, number 69, a linebacker who does not get a lot of attention. Sometimes you have somebody like Michael Brooks, who is such a great player and gets the attention, and somebody like Caston, who makes a lot of tackles, doesn't get much. He had 99 tackles a year ago. Daryl Phillips now checks in at the nose guard spot as Bill Archbarger and Jackie Sherrill both alternate personnel on a hot night in Baton Rouge. 9-27 counting in the first half. Texas A&M facing second and nine from the LSU 34. Murray, here comes the pressure this time, and he unloads. Incomplete. Good coverage as Harris was blanketed by Jefferson. And there is 
way crowd was reacting, I thought maybe there was a flag down, but there is not. And Murray got leveled. One thing they haven't been successful on is throwing these fly patterns. They've had some nice coverage by the cornerbacks. This ball's up for grabs. It's anybody's ball. That's not interference. Harris reached out there at the end of the play with that left hand and sort of slapped at Norman Jefferson. Maybe that's what the crowd marked. Any good receiver will do that, though. Third down, nine yards to go, and Texas A&M with a very balanced attack. And they picked up most of the yardage in the air. Here's a big one on third and nine. Murray has Valentine remaining, and Murray wants to use another timeout. It's surprising that a veteran quarterback uh, is going to have to use a timeout like that. When you're facing uh, Bill Arnsbarger's defense, though, he's so creative. He'll put people all over the field. He's going to confuse. No matter how experienced a quarterback is, I don't care if you've been in the pros 15 years, he can fool you. Got another scoreboard update. Let's go to Larry Burnett. All right, it is turning into a rout at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The number two ranked Canes have already gotten three touchdown passes from Vinny Testaverde, and he shows a little more versatility here as he can't throw the ball, so he decides to run 12 yards and watch the official in the end zone at the end of this play here. Oh, yeah, up close and personal, 28 to 3. Miami leading now. That game is in the second quarter at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Let's go back to Baton Rouge. The Canes are tough. So are both of these ball clubs. Texas A&M under Jackie Sherrill, LSU under Bill Arnsberger. Right now, A&M facing a third and nine situation. And in those situations so far in this ball game, they have been three out of four on those conversions. And Murray has just had an exceptional first half already. 10 out of 14, 119 yards, two touchdowns. He did have those two interceptions. Third and nine, they'll send Mickey Washington into the ball game. He's the flanker to the near side as they go to a double wing. Murray under some pressure over the middle, complete to Harris. Harris inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Jefferson on his back. But depending on where they spotted it, it looks like a first down for Texas A&M. And Murray is only a junior. Jackie Sherrill can only stand on the sidelines and thank his lucky stars he got that young man. Well, Rod Harris uh, is extremely fast. He's 4.4, and they think he'll be the greatest receiver to ever play at Texas A&M. He's got a chance to uh, break the reception mark. He needs 35 this season to be number one. Give it to Woodside on the toss to the short side. Now LSU defense that one rather well. Chased him out of bounds. Rehaj again with the stop on Woodside. One thing that surprises me right now is LSU has really stuffed all the runs. Most of the runs have been very few big plays. And A&M's been forced to almost throw as many times as they run. And Jackie Sherrill likes to have it at a two to one ratio. As we said, 65% run, 35% pass. But that's a good coach. He's adjusting to the flow of this game. He's putting the ball up because he needs to. And for the most part, LSU has not been able to stop the passing game of Texas A&M. 8.47 to go in the half, second and 12. Fake to Woodside, here comes the blitz, Rehaj on the blitz. Murray gets away and just threw that one away. Oh, and the LSU bench wanted an intentional grounding. He did have a receiver within six or seven yards, but you don't have to be uh, a Rhodes Scholar candidate as you were to understand he wasn't trying to get him the ball. Well, I think he was within six or seven yards on the fourth bounce. He just buried this thing. Again, you can see Kevin Murray is really moving. His mobility is back all the way now. He, he got out of the pocket and he released the ball, oh. but that is definitely a grounding. Yeah, that's very difficult for the official not to throw the flag on that, although that's a, that's such a call, tough call for them to make. But if, you know, if, you're, if the official standing three yards out of bounds and it almost hits him, you got an idea. 72,000 fans here called that penalty. I'll tell you that much. They've gone with a nickel back. Greg Jackson, number 35, into the package for LSU. And now we've got another timeout for Texas A&M on third and 12. LSU has been able to take all their timeouts away simply with the way they're aligning their defenses and they're covering people. They're confusing Kevin Murray, although uh, when they give him time, he's finding the right guy, but he, they've thrown away all their timeouts. Now, what has LSU been able to do uh, on the last couple of plays that are differently to put some pressure on Murray? Because for such a long time, he was just able to stand in the pocket. Well, one thing that's uh, going to hurt A&M's game plan is if they aren't able to run the ball LSU is going to start coming after him not only on the defensive line but also with linebackers 
With 8.38 to go in the half, let's check in with Larry Burnett and more scores. Larry? All right, Mike, time to check in on some Southwest Conference scores. Games in progress. Number 15, Baylor, is on top of Louisiana Tech. That one's in the second quarter. Number 19, Arkansas, also leading 14 to nothing. This one over Mississippi. It's in the second quarter. Here's a surprise. Stanford is shutting out Texas 14 to nothing. That game being played in Austin. It's 14 to nothing in the second quarter. It's Texas A&M at LSU at Baton Rouge. Let's go back to Mike Patton. Thank you very much, Larry. 14 to 7, our score here in the second quarter. Texas A&M facing a big play here. Third and 12 from the LSU 26-yard line. Six defensive backs in for LSU on this play. Woodside, the man in motion. Murray against the four-man rush. Chased him out of the pocket, and they got him this time. Carl Wilson, number 72, got the sack. And, Pat, they did it with a four-man rush. Well, when you have confidence in your secondary, and LSU does, you're able to rush with just three or four guys and put pressure even in passing situations. I said earlier, Carl Wilson is a very underrated player. He's fast, and he's very strong. And he showed, you saw his pursuit right there. I think he has a good shot to make All-America this year. Craig Stump, number nine, comes in. Now, remember, Stump is a backup quarterback. He will come on to punt, and in this situation, he usually moves up under center. He, he will have the option to run a play. And now he'll back out and punt the ball. Norman Jefferson is the deep man. And Stump just hangs it up there, trying to get it to bounce backwards for him. Hit at the goal line, it goes in. There is a flag down on the play. On fourth and 23, we'll check it out for you. 37-yard kick. And it's a delay. Now, if you're LSU, do you take it, make him kick it again? Oh, no, you take that ball at the 20 yard I would take the ball at the 20-yard line. If I give him another shot to put in the top of the corner, put it down inside the five. Doesn't look like they've made up their mind yet, although the officials are bringing the ball back to the line of scrimmage. The scoreboard indicates they are have already declined it at fourth and 29. Oh, with the delay, they wouldn't have, I guess they would not have the option to defend. Well, Craig Stump gets another chance here with five more yards to work with. Well, a lot of times you'll take a penalty to move yourself away from the 38, 39 yard line out near closer to the 40, 45. Interesting though, the officials didn't stop the play on a delay call. Usually they blow it dead, they let the play go ahead. And now Craig Stump will come back and hit it inside the 50 yard line. And he got more of this one. It's at the two, and it takes the big bounce into the end zone. So he had two shots at it, was unable to kill it inside the 20. Timeout with 7.32 to go. A&M still ahead. Our really big sale continues at Gerard Chevrolet, but there's even bigger news. Most of our Chevy cars and trucks can be financed with the lowest rates ever, 2.9%. And there are other benefits. If you don't require low rate financing, you can get a rebate up to $1,000. Never has Gerard Chevrolet offered so many different models with such a low rate of financing with so many rebates. And your good credit can still qualify you for our famous $99 down. So act now, Gerard. You'll really save money. At age 16, he began his life's work of dedication to children as a junior counselor in the neighborhood of underprivileged where he himself lived. He obtained a graduate degree in social work and then his law degree. He was a successful attorney for 10 years and has raised a fine family of his own. For the past 14 years, he has served with distinction as juvenile court judge. Judge Saul Gothard has received national recognition and has worked tirelessly for legislation for the prevention of child abuse. Judge Saul Gothard for the Court of Appeal in Jefferson Parish are doing their best on ESPN Scholastic Sports America. I'm Chris Fowler. Please join me every Saturday, 6.30 Eastern, on ESPN. Well, LSU with the football. Excuse me. Well, Mickey Go Guidry is in a quarterback right now, and they had decided before this game that it was not a reflection on Tom Hodson. They were going to put him in in the first half. They want to give him some time. They think he deserves to play. Three out of five last year, as you saw, and he gets the ball in a tough situation at his own 20-yard line. Play action fake, and Gidry throws first down. Complete to Davis. Davis across the 30, and they'll mark it right at the 30. Chet Brooks out in the vicinity, 
but Gidry comes out and guns the first one for a 10-yard gain. One for one is a way to start. One thing LSU needs to do, in the games they won last year, they were able to get the ball to Davis and McGee outside. If they can't get the ball downfield, then their running game is going to get stuffed. And right now, they've been able to get the ball there. Got Derek Salisbury in the game. Remember the last time he was in there, he got the ball in the end around. You wonder why quarterbacks wear big wristbands. A lot of them have the plays on them anymore. 7.26 to go in the half. It is a first and 10. Mark got about four that time stacked up at the 34-yard line. And the last man up off the pile is Brooks. Clock running with 7.08 to go, and the action has toned down a little bit now here in the second quarter after AM took a 14-7 lead. We had a frantic period earlier in the ballgame, three turnovers in about 45 seconds. LSU was able to take advantage of the second one. Going to an audible here. They're, they see something. They're expecting a blitz. Watch a short pass to the outside receiver. Got Williams on a wing. Here comes the blitz, and he throws to Martin. Martin straight over the middle. He might go all the way. He needs one block, and he's got it. Sammy Martin. Touchdown. job by Sammy Martin as the conversion is good to tie it up and Mickey Gidry changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Kid comes in, two passes, 76 yards and a touchdown. That's not bad. He's saying, I don't want to be on the bench, coach. When Mickey Gidry came into this game, the coach has said he was like having a coach on the field. He read that blitz. The two outside receivers ran short patterns and <laughs> it's off to the races for Sammy. Oh, that's a beautiful play. And that's what you need to do against the blitzes. A&M gambled quarterback audible at the line of scrimmage and they burn him. Here it is again. It's amazing how easy these tosses are when you can burn him. Right up the gut, he gets a block later than he needs, but this is speed. He's able to split those defenders, go into a nice little stride, take it into the end zone. And we're tied at 14 with 6.37 to go. And LSU putting on quite a performance there is Sam Martin. 165 pounds, you bet he's happy. Two touchdowns as a receiver. He came in here. They said that he's really a threat out of the backfield. He's shown it. They want to get him the ball at every opportunity. He has 82 yards on four catches. And that was a great play by Gidry to change the play at the line of scrimmage. He saw that all-out blitz coming. And a good job by Martin to read the audible. Doesn't matter if the quarterback understands it. If the receivers don't hear it, it doesn't work. LSU will kick it away from the 35. Lewis to kick it away. Deep to receive is Harris, standing at the five-yard line. I think we'll be seeing Mr. Hot, uh, Mr. Gidry in the next series, too, don't you think? When they he get the ball could back? be, yes. And it shows you how wrong we were. We thought this was going to be a defensive struggle, and it's 14-14 in the first half. Pretty kick this time, and Harris driven back to the three-yard line. 15, 20, 22, and no more. Jamie Bice on kickoff coverage, number 40 down to make the tackle after a 19-yard return. Take a look at this drive, and it didn't take Gidry long. He came in, hit a couple of passes. See you later. Both of their touchdown drives have been under one minute. It's <laughs> a way to do it. And there's Sam Martin being congratulated on the sideline. Sylvester Morgan in at tight end for Texas A&M, number 89. He's the junior. Back up to Rod Bernstein. And Murray gives it straight up the middle. Not much for Roger Vick as Henry Thomas, the nose guard, stacks up the middle. And a little extracurricular pushing and shoving down in the middle of the pile. One of the keys to being a great nose guard is being able to get underneath the center's pads and force penetration. Stood him up. He took him on, and it just stuffs the whole play, and the rest of the linebackers and linemen can get on the play. That's a great job by the nose guard. There's another Gidry from Louisiana uh, that they call Lightning Ron Gidry for the Yankees. I have to uh, give Martin the same 
same nickname. Bernstein back in the tight end. And Tommy Clapp checks in, number 77, for LSU at a left defensive end spot. Murray back to throw, quick sideline, complete again. That's the Bernstein driven out of bounds. Rehage over there. Boy, Rehage has had uh, four or five games worth of tackles here in the first half. Thank you for the welcome here to Baton Rouge. It's nice down here. And you see uh, Go, G-E-A-U-X, on the left. <laughs> it's tough to get used to, especially if you have a Spanish background like I did in school. Of course, I couldn't tell you how to spell Go in Spanish either. 5.47 to go first half. Texas A&M has the ball at their own 34-yard line. We're tied at 14. Two of the best clubs in the country in their opener of the 1986 season. Give it off to the tailback. Nothing doing. Roger Vick, rather fullback. And he is stacked up. And we got Michael Brooks in on the tackle along with Gidry. Now, Roger Vick was a preseason All-America by Playboy, and they are just stopping him at the line of scrimmage, and it's hurting A&M. Usually they get much better balance. You know, he was second team all-conference last year to Anthony Tony, who was his own teammate, was the first team tailback, fullback. It's not bad. Tells you something about the athletes that Jackie Sherrill recruits, as we talked about before. Time becoming a factor now in the first half with 5-10 and counting on second and nine for Murray. Vick is the only remaining back. Here comes an LSU blitz. Murray on loads. Harris couldn't quite hold it, and Jefferson was right on top of him. Harris ran the good pattern. Murray got the ball there, but Jefferson right on top of him. Intended for Harris. Up by Norman Jefferson is their best cover guy. He's cocky. He's confident he can make the plays. Looks like Roland right Barbe. No Roland wonder. Barbe got a hand on that one. Ray Hodge could have picked that ball off him right through his hands. The one of that ball was behind him. Again, Norman Jefferson will guard any receiver all over the field. LSU will go with six defensive backs on third and nine. Four-man rush. Murray dumps it short. Complete to Bernstein. But Bernstein will not get the first down because of Nicky Hazard. A great tackle by the linebacker. He was a backup last year to Sean Burks, and that's him with his hands raised in the air. And Stump will have to come on to punt it away for Texas A&M. The Aggies had better be careful if they let this crowd stay in it. They can be a factor. Stump the backup quarterback, so you always have to be careful. Deep to receive is Norman Jefferson. Stump a beautiful punt. Jefferson signaling fair catch back all the way up to his own nine-yard line. And Stump nailed it for 49 yards and no return. Timeout with four minutes, 18 seconds to go in the half. We're tied at 14. Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste? Old world aging and the new world's youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Michelob Light, old world quality from Anheuser-Busch. Make a low light, the best of both worlds. Make a low light, oh yes you can have it all. This is all Mickey Gidry did when he got to play. Came in through two passes, both of them complete, 76 yards and a touchdown. He doesn't get to come in and play the second series. Tom Hodson's <laughs> back in there. I bet he's standing over there and wants to go over to Coach Arnsparger and say, hey, what do I need to do? You wanted that touchdown on the first play? But Hodson's back in there. Arnsparger not afraid to use either one of them. Has a lot of confidence in him, but LSU will be starting from the nine-yard line right now. And they'll get out to the 21-yard line in the best run of the night for Harvey Williams. Chet Brooks had to drag him down in the secondary, and Williams can really explode. Well, he's a strong back. I think you'll see on this isolation, number 11, Johnny Holland, All-America, great player, but he's going to get knocked back about 10 yards on this play. 
Sometimes it's tough when you come in with all the accolades and all the fame. People go after you. They were gunned up for you, and they are hitting him today. With Garland, Sean Batiste got a nice block on him coming out of the backfield as the lead blocker for the freshman Harvey Williams. Here's Harvey. Of course, he and Holland went to the same high school in Hempstead, Texas. A lot of that on these two clubs. They recruit in the same area. A lot of feelings run deep. Four minutes and counting. First half, first down, LSU at their own 20. Hodson changing the play. Williams and Jean Baptiste in the backfield. Williams will get it off the right side. And picked up about five yards. Kelm and Holland on the tackle. Now we talked about uh, Mickey Guidry, how great he came in, two passes for a touchdown. Now a lot of people don't realize a lot of these backup quarterbacks can play. He had 2,000 yards passing his senior year in high school. He hasn't played for a couple years. But that doesn't mean he can't throw the ball. Tell you what, you, if you're on the team, if you're recruited by an LSU or a Texas A&M, you must have been an outstanding high school player to begin with. They don't, uh, they don't take chicken salad these places. Right. Three minutes, 17 seconds to go. Second and six. Hodson to throw. No pressure at all. Guns complete. Davis at the 35-yard line. Kelm on top of him, along with Johnny Holland. But it was a good toss by Tom Hodson. And now we've got him going after each other. Andal second, Alex Morris wanted a piece of each other. And Alex Morris at 187 had better back away from Andal second, 270. Final sec bench press is 440 pounds. I think he could probably throw him a few yards. He could bench press three defensive backs, couldn't he? But well, this is a rivalry. We came in here, we knew there, we knew there was gonna be some hot blood. There's no love lost. Let's take a look and see if we can see what happened as Holland makes the stop. All right, so there's an All-America play. Try to take the ball away. Right. And Hazard didn't like it. He and Holland will go after it, and then Andelsek gets in there. Good job by the refs controlling that one. Clock down to 2.54. It's a first down for LSU. They have the ball at their own 34. Fake to Williams. Deep sideline, and it's dropped. McGee had his hands on it, couldn't hold it. Would have been a tough catch because he had to turn his body completely. Holly on the coverage, but Hodson got it there. Well, this could have been a great catch. This, the receivers dream about an opportunity to pull this type of ball down. He got it. He stopped the momentum. He had it, and it just fell out. Had it for a half a step and couldn't hold it. And there is a flag down on the play. They're talking it over with Holland, and he is looking to the bench to Jackie Sherrill. You know, receivers actually work on things like that. They'll have the receiver coach throw balls over the wrong shoulder. They'll have you with your back to the thrower and then have the ball over one or the other shoulder, and you have to turn and catch the ball. So that's something people pull down uh, more of those catches than you expect, but they really do work on it. It's not like you've never seen it before. Well, quarterbacks aren't going to put them on your numbers every play. And it's a holding. Let's get out of Tim Brando on the sideline. Michael John Roper, the outside linebacker for Texas A&M, clocked out of the game with a twisted ankle. They anticipate him coming in. They'll need him. He's a good cover man. First down, 20 for LSU. Tigers trying to get on the board again, tied at 14. And they'll give it off to Alvin Lee, the freshman running back, who's into the ball game for the first time. And Lee gets little, if anything, stacked up. Sadler was in there on the stop. Clock is running at 2.29. There is Roper on the sideline. What do they have a great set of linebackers for Texas A&M. Speed, strength, experience. Three or four pros there. Two minutes and 13 seconds and counting. LSU has one timeout left. Hodson had it tipped at the line of scrimmage, but it's still complete at the 29-yard line. The tackle made by Holly. But the ball got to Wendell Davis, who was not the intended receiver. But sometimes you get lucky. There's no question. This ball is knocked up in the air. Could have just as easily been an interception. They get a lucky uh, reception out of this. Well, that's a great play to jump up and knock the ball down. Defensive linemen work on those things. It doesn't happen very often, though. That was Sammy O'Brien, the nose guard, who couldn't get in on the pass rush, but got the hand up there. Third down, 15 yards to go. Hodson on a roll. Here comes Holland, and Holland nailed him as he throws incomplete. And the flag goes down right on top of Holland and the quarterback, Hodson. Holland just really laid the lumber to him, and it'll cost him 15 yards. 
I don't know about this call. I don't either. I think it was a clean hit. I know he's frustrated because he's missed a couple plays tonight, but that was a clean hit. It's a judgment call by the official as to whether he got there in time, but you could see it coming. Holland had a head of steam. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. He absolutely hammers him. Oh, no. That is a clean play. Sure it is. Not late at all. Maybe they said he got up around the chin, went head hunting a little bit, but he sure didn't hit him late. Yeah, that right Russell hand, the right passer. hand, and left Defense. hand gets a little Automatic into the chin, but first down. I don't think so. I don't think that's a penalty. I mean, I believe you should protect the quarterbacks, but the linebackers got to get their shots every once in a while. That's <laughs> not spoken like a former quarterback, of course. Six penalties against Texas A&M for 40 yards really hurt themselves in that department. And now LSU, with a minute 25 to go, has an automatic first down at its own 44-yard line. A&M should have been receiving a punt. They'll put Martin out on the wing again, and Hudson likes to throw to him. Tried to throw to either he or Davis. It went between them. But if you had a Martin who's coming out of the backfield, you want to try to isolate him on somebody and get him the football. Hudson checking that wristband for the plays. Remember, he is a red shirt freshman. Pretty good numbers here in the first half. But the real numbers belong to Mickey Gidry, his backup, who was two for two for 76 yards and a touchdown. Roper back into the defensive lineup for Texas A&M. And second and 10 with a minute 20 to go. Texas A&M out of timeouts. LSU has one remaining. Hodson changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And he didn't change it in time. The 25-second clock expired. you got to make those audibles as quick as you can. And A&M, being a veteran defense, often will wait to change its uh, defensive look. Which is the right thing to do, particularly against a first-year quarterback. The longer you make the offense wait to make their adjustments, the better off you are. If you show your blitz too early like they did earlier, you're going to get hurt. Harvey Williams 22 and Derek Salisbury 28 check back into the ball game for LSU on second and now 15 from the Tiger 39 and Texas A&M showing blitz with Kelm and Holland right at the line of scrimmage they, they back out of it though and Hodson lost his balance Holland after him and there's going to be a flag down they're going to call a clip as the pass is incomplete that was not a clip. That was I had. Great I was block. watching it too. It looked like he got him from the side. That was a clean block. That may have been a makeup call. You think? Well, I like to. They say they don't, don't. Those do don't that. exist. But uh, I never did it as a referee. I'll tell you that much. In basketball. Here's the call. And they called it right at the point of the clip. There's a point of the clip. Holland, who did not blitz after. Hodson lost his balance, came on the rush. And they're discussing the options right now. We have pointed out that Johnny Holland missed, you know, a tackle here, maybe got blocked or another. But one thing you have to realize, he is all over the field. AM uses him for everything. Here he is. He fakes the blitz, then he comes. He'll beat the uh, offensive back here, and he's he's got a that's a clean block. There's no question that was a good block. If you get your head in front of the leg, it is not clipping. And he had a head. Uh, Garland Jean-Baptiste was the man who was making the block, the man who missed him the first time. Clipping. Offense. Still second down. Well, you hate to see the officials make a call like that when uh, when the replay shows clearly that it was not. Well, it's particularly disappointing for Jean-Baptiste. He missed the block early, initially came back, made a nice effort, got a clean block, and got called for a penalty. Well, now it's second and 30. This is a deep hole for LSU with a minute five to go. And they'll go with a safe play. They'll go with the draw that gets virtually nothing as Holland makes the tackle. And a penalty. We had an altercation between a wide receiver and a defensive back where they are heated right now. Really going after each other. Let's check the call on this one. James Flowers got nailed by a wide receiver late in the play, and uh, he retaliated, but they called a penalty on the first hit, which is unusual. It's good when they see it the first time instead of the retaliation. And now they're going to, I think, go over to talk to both coaches and say, we don't want any more of this. We're going we're gonna to make this a nice, uh, clean game. We're going to remain in control of it. Let's... Well, uh, 
interesting in that you know both teams are very aggressive strong teams but actually it's been very clean a couple of these penalties were not penalties and now the blood's really starting to rush and everyone's heated up but uh, they weren't good calls stay with us at halftime because Larry and Bino will update you on all of tonight's games with scores and highlights and what a day it's been and we'll look back 20 years to 1966 when Notre Dame and Michigan State met in one of college football's epic battles and or was it what a great game 10 10 and yeah. Notre Dame and Michigan put on quite a show today Second and 30 it's going to be as they'll mark off this penalty against LSU. And LSU's got to be very careful now with 56 seconds to go. They could run out the clock in the first half. Dead ball, personal foul, offense, third down. Well, there's no question. I think you uh, you lay low here. You just go with a real simple play up the middle. Try to give your punter a little room. Whatever yard did you pick up here, just you tack that onto your punt. So it'd be nice if they picked up five or ten here. Oh, really? On uh, It's now third and 42, so they are going to have to kick it away one way or another unless they can get a big play out of this one and run a lot of time off the clock. They'll give it to the outside. That's Martin. Martin out to about the 23-yard line. Brooks on the tackle. Remember Texas A&M out of timeouts. They cannot stop the clock, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see them come after the punter. And now they mark it 25 seconds, and they don't have to punt the ball. They can just let the clock run out. The officials, that 25-second clock starts after the ball is marked ready for play. They marked it ready for play with 22 seconds left, so the 25-second clock will expire, and LSU will not have to have the dangerous situation of punting deep from their own territory. And the LSU fans will stand on their feet and give their club an ovation as they leave the field tied 14-14 with Texas A&M. Pat, quite a first half. Uh, great defense on both sides. More offense than we expected. Now let's go back to the studio and Larry Burnett and Bino for the update on college football. All right, Mike, good game going on there in Baton Rouge. Bino and I are here. We'll update the top 20 scoreboard for you. And we've got a special feature on that 1966 game between Michigan State and Notre Dame, it ended in a 10-10 tie and in all the elements to be one of the great games in college football. We'll have that coming up and we'll do it as our halftime show continues here on ESPN. It's trouble, 99.9% .9 of my business is done over the phone. Effective immediately. It's got to be cost-effective, and it's got to be clear. U.S. Sprint is the lowest-priced major long-distance company in America. That's what I need. Lower than AT&T, lower than MCI. Well, we're talking about big bucks. The best overall savings. Super. And if you become a Sprint charter customer during our biggest sale ever, you could save even more. So call now and find out more about U.S. Sprint. And buy it. <laughs> Pure, natural glass. Protects the goodness and taste you want for your baby. And with recyclable glass, you can see that the good things that come in glass come just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers naturally. Panasonic, the future of office automation. Advanced equipment with an extraordinary concept. The easier, the better. Panasonic Genesis copiers are most sophisticated yet simplest to use ever. So easy, they automatically adjust for proper size and exposure. All you duplicate are your copies, not your efforts. Panasonic Genesis copiers, like our typewriters, computers, and peripherals. The easier, the better. Panasonic Office Automation. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. 
Well, we've got a 14-14 game in Baton Rouge. Time now to check out the top 20 scoreboard, and we'll start out with number two, Miami. They're in a game tonight against Texas Tech at the Orange Bowl in Miami. It is at the half now. Vinny Testaverde has thrown three touchdown passes. Miami leads 28-3. In action this afternoon, it was number three, Michigan over Notre Dame, just barely. John Carney for Notre Dame missed a field goal with 15 seconds left. It would have won the game, but the Irish lose it by one. Alabama a winner today. They are now 3-0. They beat Southern Mississippi by the score of 31-17. Mike Shula, a couple of TD passes in that one. And the game that uh, you see right there, Mississippi State and Tennessee, it was an upset. Mississippi State wins it by four. They upset Syracuse last week. They are on a roll. In other action, New Mexico almost did it to BYU, but Steve Lindsley tossed three TD passes for BYU. They win it by a single point. Look at this game. Washington over Ohio State, 40-7. to It's the first time since 1894 that Ohio State has lost its first two games in a season. In action tonight, it is Louisiana Tech trailing Baylor by the score of 14 to nothing. It is in the second quarter. Other action as well. Here's a game that's just about uh, set to get started. It'll be in Arizona at Tempe, Michigan State going against Arizona State. Duke and Georgia this afternoon. The Bulldogs win it 31-7. to Arkansas is leading Mississippi 21 to nothing. That game is at halftime. And Colorado State and and Arizona are a game, uh, late game, just about ready to get underway in Arizona. Uh, some interesting games in that uh, top 20 today. Yes, and Miami looks quite impressive. Uh, Vinny Testaverde, three touchdown passes, and he also ran for a touchdown. He definitely is going to be awful tough to beat for the Heisman Trophy. He's playing well. He's a tough kid. Uh, he has great feet. He's able to move. And uh, again, Miami looks very impressive. Looking forward to seeing them play Oklahoma in two weeks. That should be a good one. Also looking forward to coming up in just a couple of minutes, our feature on the 1966 Notre Dame-Michigan State game. It's been called the game of the century by some people, and we'll fill you in on it when we come back on our halftime report. Tonight's halftime report is being brought to you by Schick. When the beard is back, you gotta get Schick. The beard is back. The beard is back. The beard is back. It's back again. I need to get. You better get. Gotta get. Gotta get Schick. When the beard is back, Schick disposable is all. Ready for close, clean shaves. Shave after shave. I need to get, you better get, gotta get, get sick. The night has a beat of its own. A theme of its own. A beer of its own. Exceptionally smooth, Niccolo. You could make tonight the best part of your day. Since I've been at LSU, I know more than ever what it takes to make a great university. The many programs, the research efforts, the tradition, and of course, progress for the future. They're all important. They all make the university great. But you know, I find it's more than that. People make a great university. Here at LSU, people make the difference. LSU, a great university. Next Saturday, Michigan State will host Notre Dame in East Lansing, Michigan. 20 years ago, those two teams met in the same stadium. They were the top two teams in the country, and the national championship was at stake. And the game was equal to its buildup back in 1966. <laughs> It was a game that was just bitter. Uh, we really didn't have any use for Michigan State, and they didn't have any use for us. And, and it was a game in its purest form, I think. You know, you were just at a point where you just wanted to kill somebody. I mean, you know, if I... If probably if we had run across Notre Dame in the parking lot, we, we'd have probably fought them. That's how crazy we were. It was November 19, 1966. Spartan Stadium, East Lansing, Michigan. 
Notre Dame was 8-0 under Era Parsegian. Michigan State was the defending national champion. The Spartans were undefeated in nine games with Duffy Doherty roaming the sidelines. The nation's top two teams battling in what many people still believe was the greatest college football game of this century. Tickets were by no means easy to come by, but one man from Ohio used his head. He wrote a letter to the ticket manager here at Michigan State, and he said, if President Johnson wanted to be at that game, you'd find him a seat, wouldn't you? Well, of course they would. He said, the president can't make it. I'll take his ticket. And for the price of a $5 ticket, that man had a seat right on the 48-yard line. The national media jumped on the game. Notre Dame's Terry Hanratty and Jim Seymour made the cover of time. And on game day, the huge press box at Spartan Stadium was packed on every level. Fred Stabley was Michigan State's sports information director back then. We had a fourth row of seats. We have three rows now, which hold over 220 people. But we put a fourth row in of stools that we borrowed from uh, uh, classroom buildings and laboratories. And 80 of them sat back there on these high stools. And then others stood besides that. There were well over 300 people just in this deck alone. We had some newspaper people who checked in late, and we had them in, seated in the stands. Not too many of those, but there were a few that we just couldn't get in at all. There were about 600 news media there all week long, and they'd asked me to attend two different press conferences a day, and one uh, newsman asked me if our players were up for the game. I said, well, they're up so high, I'm going to have to shake the trees to get them down. It was that kind of game. Never had the nation's top two teams battled so late in the regular season with the national championship on the line. It was called the Pole Bowl, and it featured an impressive cast of characters. There was Lynch at linebacker for the Irish, number 61. Big Bubba on the line for the Spartans at 6'8", 290 pounds. Bob Blyer was in the Notre Dame backfield. You know him better now as Rocky. Clint Jones, number 26, carrying the load for Michigan State. Throw in Alan Page and Kevin Hardy for Notre Dame. And add Gene Washington and George Webster for MSU. And don't forget, Terry Hanratty, Notre Dame's top quarterback, was knocked out of this game in the first quarter with a separated shoulder. The day was gray, overcast, temperatures in the low 30s. But the Spartans heated things up in the first quarter. Jones led the way, and Reggie Cavender found the north end zone from the four. Michigan State added a Dick Kenny field goal and went ahead 10-zip. With Hanratty on the sideline, the Irish called on Coley O'Brien, a scrambler who gave the Spartans trouble. O'Brien was a diabetic, and he ran out of steam late in the game. But he found Bob Gladio here in the second quarter for Notre Dame's only touchdown of the game. That cut State's lead to 10-7 at halftime, and the game was living up to its billing. Well, the stadium was a boiling cauldron. After every single play, there was a roar like a touchdown had just been scored. A guy might lose five yards, but somebody's roaring. If, if we lost it, it was Notre Dame that was roaring. I never saw a game, and some of the writers had this in their stories the, the following day, that they never witnessed a game in which there was such continuous uproar on every single play as there was at this. It was that kind of excitement and tensions. All of them, every little play was that important, that significant. The score remained 10-7 through the third. Then Joe Azaro booted the game into a tie with this 28-yard field goal on the first play of the fourth. Azaro later missed a potential game-winning field goal. Defense took command of the contest, and late in the game, Michigan State punted the ball. The Irish had it first and 10 on their own 30 with less than a minute and a half to play. 10-10 game. People don't realize that the ball was kicked to us by Michigan State. They gave it to us in the, in the last minute and 21 seconds hoping for us to make the error that would give them field position and so forth. But with O'Brien fading and several stars injured on the bench, Parsegian chose to run the ball and the clock, much to the displeasure of the fans and the opposition. I said, hey, man, we tired. Why are you sitting on the ball? And, and again, apologies, but we talked about their parents. We talked about Notre Dame like a dog to try to get them angry, to, to try, at least try and go for it. They, they wouldn't do it. After six straight running plays, it was over. The top two teams in the country had played to a 10-10 tie. And I remember the terrible disappointment I felt at the end of the game. There was no feeling of exultation, no feeling that we'd accomplished anything. And I made the mistake of of saying at the end of the game that a tie is like kissing your sister. And I think I coined that phrase, and, and I offended my very wonderful sister. And she said, what's wrong with kissing your sister? And, and I had to agree with her. The reviews came in quickly. 
Parsegian was right at the center of the controversy. Why had he played not to lose instead of going for the win? After all, the Notre Dame victory march says, I look back on it now and I was amazed by the post-game criticism. Uh, I wouldn't change anything that I did then, uh, today, because I felt that we did the right thing then. And no one knows any better than the coaches on the sideline, much better than people in the stands or members of the media. And as I look back in retrospect now, that was the greatest move that Persian made. Even though he came out of the game as the GOAT, that was the greatest move that he could have made because he knew the press was going to take him to number one. And that's what happened. Michigan State's season was done, but the Irish trounced USC the next week and won the national title. And while big games and championships sometimes drift out of focus over time, memories of the 10-10 tie remain sharp and crisp 20 years later. The Michigan State-Notre Dame game of 1966 has not faded into the background over 20 years. And I think a lot of things go into that, why that has happened. Maybe one of the reasons why is because we were 10-10 at the end of the game. 10-10 tie. It's one of those games where if you saw it, you remember where you were when you saw it. It's like a memorable event. You were at that game. I was at that game, but it was the sidebars that also made it interesting. A priest in Connecticut changed the time for confession so the Notre Dame fans <laughs> could see him. I have the feeling Notre Dame has a lot of Irish fans. I've learned that through the years. Also, it was the first game under the TV plan that was ever changed. They used to make the entire schedule in March. Regional game, Kentucky and Tennessee, Michigan State, Notre Dame. Second game, USC, UCLA, and California, Stanford. What they did, instead of watching Tennessee, Kentucky, they got Michigan State, Notre Dame live. But the people in the Southeast still saw Tennessee, Kentucky, but they locked themselves in the house, don't call me, and they saw the Notre Dame game on tape but they did not know the score, and it was as if it were a live game. It was a memorable afternoon for those involved. I don't think it was even the greatest game of the decade. Mm. The game of the decade was voted by the sports writers. It was te Texas 15, Arkansas 14 in 1969. All right, 10-10 was that game. 14-14 is our game here on ESPN. We'll go back and show you one of the big plays from the first half of that game at LSU. We'll do that when our halftime report continues. face with something extraordinary. American Airlines Fall Super Savers. Incredibly low fares to over 90 cities in the continental United States. Discounts up to 75% and prices as low as $39 to $159. American Airlines Fall Super Savers. Call today because space is going fast. We're American Airlines. Something special in the How about 8 o'clock? Well, let's try it one more time. At Texas A&M University, every victory means a lot. All right, that's what we're looking for. Texas A&M at LSU, it's all tied at 14 in Baton Rouge. Let's show you why it is tied at 14 at halftime at Tiger Stadium. Second quarter, the Aggies were leading 14 to 7. Tigers had backup quarterback Mickey Guidry in. He looked pretty good. He hit Sammy Martin over the middle, and it was so long, Sammy. He goes 66 yards for his second touchdown of the night. 14 to 14 was the score. That is our score at halftime of that game, and we'll be back here at our halftime report after this timeout. We 
are excited. You can buy a new 86 Royal Oldsmobile at only 2.9% APR. 2.9% on every 86 Oldsmobile in stock for 36 months or 4.8% for 48 months. Plus, you'll get a big year-end discount on hundreds of beautiful new Oldsmobiles. You can save thousands of dollars now at Royal Olds. We're excited at Royal Oldsmobile. Attention property owners, according to a recent statistic, we are experiencing the highest rate of foreclosure since the Great Depression. Don't let foreclosure happen to you. Hi, I'm Hill Oob, president of HOI Incorporated, a company designed to help real estate owners with troubled property. If you've tried to sell but can't, or maybe you're experiencing financial or management difficulties with your property, or maybe you're a lending institution with too many REOs, Call HOI today. We can help. 834-2033. Use the day's most important NFL matchups and reviews the most exciting sports highlights of the week. Sunday morning on ESPN. Just about set now to go back to Baton Rouge for that game with Texas A&M and LSU. They're tied 14-14. I'll be back throughout the second half with updates on games still in progress. And don't forget, Bino and I will be back on the Hartford College Football Report. Following the game with post-game uh, highlights and scores, we'll bring you up to date on everything that's been going on. Let's now go to Mike Patrick and the crew at Tiger Stadium. score at halftime, Texas A&M and LSU locked up in a 14-14 tie at Tiger Stadium. Tim Brando with you. We have an outstanding game coming up next week. That game, Penn State and Boston College, the Nittany Lions are going after another national championship possibility. How do they get it done? They get it done this way. Joel Paterno, an outstanding coach an outstanding team that relies heavily on the running game and that running game is utilized inside as well as outside inside and outside is dj dozier truly another heisman trophy candidate one that we'll have to watch in that game at foxborough but he's not the only thing in the penn state arsenal they also have tim manoa he can get it done inside and can show surprise and speed as well so that will be the game next week. Penn State taking on Boston College, and BC is coming off a big win as well. They came up with a 21 to 15 get together against Cal against California. That ball game was played earlier today, and in that game they lost their starting quarterback. But Mark Camphouse came in, led them on a 52 yard drive to beat Cal. The final in that one was 21 to 15. So it's BC and Penn State next week. But we still have this week. And this week means the second half of LSU at A&M. Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally, let's take a look at the statistical data in this one. It's as close as the game, isn't it? And Tim, you're right. If we have a second half as good as the first half, uh, we're going to have another enjoyable hour and a half here in Baton Rouge. And the stats almost even, which is surprising, Pat, in, uh, in the fact that LSU was not expected to be able to move the ball as well as Texas A&M. But in fact, they got two more total yards in the first half. Well, the shocking statistic there is, look, 143 yards passing for AM, only 63 yards on the ground. They've been able to hold uh, Roger Vick to 3.3 yards a carry. Last year, as a backup, he averaged 4.5. And if that continues, it's going to put more and more pressure on Kevin Murray. Now, he does have the receivers to go downfield, but it's going to hurt AM's uh, ball control. There's Gidry on the sideline, a young man who came in for one series, engineered a touchdown drive, had uh, two out of two for 76 yards in the touchdown, has been back to the ball game since. I guarantee you he's leading the country as far as uh, quarterback ratings. He's got to have an astronomical rating. 38 yards of pass. Here's what LSU did uh, in their first possession. Not much. Three yards lost. They had to punt. The second time they got the ball, they fumbled it away, and then they went on a 48-yard drive, got their first touchdown then a punt after an eight-play drive, and then their most impressive drive of the entire first half. 80 yards for the touchdown. It came on only three plays, and then they got backed up in their own territory late in the first half. They had two nice touchdowns. The drives consisted of less than one minute of playing time. They need big plays. They need them on defense. They need them in offense if they're going to beat A&M, and they got it done in the first half. Bill Ernst partner on the sideline. Texas A&M will kick it away. We understand that Derek Salisbury, the backup wide receiver, the freshman from Thibodeau, was tossed out of the ball game for th throwing a flagrant elbow late in the first half, so he will not be back in there. 
And here is the Texas A&M kickoff coverage team as Sam Martin and Eddie Fuller go deep to receive. Martin, 23. They wanted to keep him away from that kickoff return responsibility because at 165 pounds, he gets beaten up so much just running from scrimmage. I'm still predicting LSU will break one past the 50-yard line on a kickoff. I stuck my neck out earlier. It's I think been they can. In three years, this 12-man kickoff team has not let anything go more than 29 yards. They'll start from the four. He's got some room to run. Cuts back at the 20 to the 25 to the 26-yard line goes Sammy Martin. And LSU will set up shop there. A 22-yard, 23-yard make a kickoff return for Martin. And that's an excellent return against these guys. Hodson comes out to start the second half for LSU. Seven out of 12 in the first half, 70 yards, one touchdown. His backup, Mickey Gidry, got the other touchdown. Got to be a comfortable feeling for Bill Arnsparker to have two quarterbacks that he has confidence in. Hodson, the redshirt freshman out of Matthews, Louisiana. Ball at the 26. Jean-Baptiste, the up back, and Martin is the tailback out of the eye. Both wide receivers to the far side, and it's Martin picking his way through to about the 33-yard line. James Flowers from the left corner came up to make the stop. It had to be gratifying for Coach Bill Arnsberger because he uh, he gambled it. You put a quarterback, they had decided before the game to put a quarterback in a series. Gidry in in the second quarter at some point. It's kind of a strange game plan when you think about it, but it sure worked. The gentleman has probably seen his share and more of LSU football. Got to be loving it tonight. 14-14, second and four for the Tigers from their own 33. Once again, out of the eye. And Williams is now the eye back. And he'll get it behind Jean-Baptiste. First down, LSU. And they hit the ground, fumbled the football, and Texas A&M has recovered. And the recovery made by strong safety, Alex Morris. And there is the sad look on Harvey Williams as he coughed it up. I know it's got to be disappointing for uh, Harvey Williams. He comes in here, first game with LSU against the AM team he thought he might play for. It's a nice blocking job. They open the hole for him. He just gets stripped of the ball. There's a lot of big, strong arms in there. Clearly a fumble, and AM will set up shop at the LSU 41. And they'll give it to Vic, the fullback, who has not had much success. He is stopped by Hazard and Barbe. Here's what Texas A&M was able to do in the first half when they had the football. The first time they got their hands on it, they went 75 yards for a touchdown in 10 plays. The next two series were stopped by intercepted passes, and then once again, they went 78 yards, a long touchdown drive. The only two times they were really stopped uh, on their own was when they had to punt the ball the last two possessions of the first half. Second and seven right here. Complete as it was off the fingertips of Keith Woodside. Murray may have had a little bit too much mustard on that. Ron Sancho dropped back off his left end outside linebacker spot in coverage. Number 29, Rod Bernstein. When you start catching passes early in the game, you're going to get some attention. They're definitely holding him. Not only double teaming him, they're grabbing his shirt right in front of an official. I can't believe the official didn't see it. No call. But it's tough sometimes. Uh, he gets blocked out of making some of those calls. But Rod Bernstein is going to be getting a lot of attention this happening. Guarantee that. Brooks is really their best cover man, and I think he has spent most of his night on Bernstein. Third down, eight yards to go. Murray just standing comfortably in the pocket. Complete pass, first down at the 29. They hit Shea Walker on a beautiful throw. Pearson with great defense, but Walker had inside position, and Murray just lined it in there. A lot of times people don't realize that quarterbacks, even though they appear to have a lot of time to throw a ball, once they throw it, they make that completion, they get hit all the time. They have so many bruises after games no one ever noticed when from the stands. Boy, what a toss, though. And his feet were planted. He didn't move them once. He just went back and set up. Ball at the 30. This is Vic trying to get outside. Got some room to run for the first time. He'll pick up about seven yards. Chris Carrier rode him to the ground, a weak safety. Vic is a quality player, and we have an a &M, another AM player down at the sideline at the 25-yard line, and they'll have to attend to him. Murray's been able to get the ball to Walker and Bernstein. What they have been, well, I think they had one pass to Rod Harris, and he's really the game-breaker as a receiver. You don't want to try to identify him until we're sure who it is, young man shaking up at the far sideline after Vic picked up uh, six or seven yards on that one. Really the first time he's had any running room, Pat. 
Well, it's frustrating as a running back. You, you certainly want to have the holes. And uh, in the A&M offense, they don't turn to the run as in desperation. They expect to set up their passing with the running. So I know he's had a frustrating day in the backfield. And it is Shea Walker, number 85, and he's going to be all right. Gets up and walks off under his own power. Well, Walker, this happens a lot to wide receivers. You'll have a running back run right over you when you try to throw a block, and uh, that's why a lot of receivers tend to uh, shadow block as opposed to really get into people. <laughs> it is dangerous out there. Walker goes to the sidelines. He's had uh, he's an excellent possession type receiver. Just finds a way to get open. 47 yards on four catches. It's second and four right now. Vic is the remaining running back, and he'll have the football. And very close to a first down. Once again, Carrier and Hazard on the tackle. Hazard done a good job tonight. Here's Walker at the sideline, and he got it in the ribs or in the sternum. Makes it a little difficult to inhale for about five minutes. If you're lucky, it only lasts five minutes. Oh, you got a knee right in the side and you knock the wind out of him. Someone like Nicky Hazard isn't going to get a lot of publicity with Toby Caston and Michael Brooks as his uh, sidekicks in the linebacking core, but he has made some nice plays tonight. Made a lot of tackles. Third down, a yard to go. Texas A&M has reached the LSU 20. Vic again. Second effort probably got him the first down. Barbe and Thomas made the stop, and Hazard again was in on the pile. Really, they have done a good job in uh, controlling the dangerous Michael Brooks, the All-American linebacker. He has not been able to make the big play that he is uh, so known for. Well, he is. Uh, he's, uh, he's all over the field. That's one thing. One thing. It Quickly down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Tim. Mike, uh, Shane Walker has a little bit of a problem with his ribs. They think, though, it's just a, a bad problem with his uh, breath being lost. But they're back. Murray complete to Bernstein inside the 10, driven out of bounds at the 8-yard line by Toby Caston. But Bernstein, who was shut down early, is now starting to hurt LSU. They like to run him underneath on these little delay patterns. Again, he's just too fast for a linebacker to take man-to-man. -man. And in these zones, when he catches the ball, the key to the A&M offense is to catch these short passes and turn them up and turn them into 10, 15-yard gains, which is what they've been able to do. He's caught five passes tonight. This is reminiscent of his Cotton Bowl performance a year ago when he caught six passes in that ball game after only nine in their entire regular season. First and goal, they'll give it to Vic. Tries to cut outside, and there is Michael Brooks. Played off the block and whammo. Right when you mention him, he has not having that big game. He makes a play. Well, Michael Brooks makes a lot of plays in the backfield. He's so fast and explosive. He, he almost got that handoff, as a matter of fact, and he took the guy right down, put him right on his back. Bill Arnsparger said he could be the best he has ever been around. Made All-State as a high school sophomore. He said it was like swatting flies after playing with all the guys in this uh, tough, rusty Louisiana neighborhood. First time Murray has really had all that much pressure was chased out of the pocket by Nicky Hazard again and four or five of his teammates, and they forced him out of bounds that time. Well, talking about Rod Bernstein, only had nine catches, and he goes into the Cotton Bowl, and he picks off, uh, what, six? He has six catches that game. Coach has said going into the season, it gives you such a lift as an athlete. Comes into this year, he had a big game. Not only is he more confident, but the quarterback, Kevin Murray, is going to go to him more. The coaches are going to call his number. I think he's in for a big year. Murray looks to the sideline to Jackie Sherrill and the offensive coaches on third and goal from the nine. They'll send two wide receivers to the near side. Thompson, number 80, and Harris, 17. Murray, plenty of time, throws over the middle, complete to Woodside, and Woodside will not get by the six-yard line. And again, it's a great job by Nicky Hazard, who wrapped him up. And Steve Rehage came over to get him some help. And they'll have to go with a field goal with Scott Slater. If LSU's linebackers can keep making these one-on-one -on -one tackles and bringing the guys right down as soon as they catch the ball, they're going to stop A&M's passing game. Slater has only two, tried two field goals in his collegiate career. Missed during the regular season, hit one in the Cotton Bowl. 22-yard attempt. And it's good. And Texas A&M, on the strength of a 22-yard field goal, here in the third quarter, has taken a 17-14 lead over LSU. We can be a lifeline or a heart line. We'll be there when you need us to be. For your computer needs, for where your future leads, we're the right choice, AT&T. Whether it's telephones, long distance, information systems, or computers, 
There's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rub you bland on your fuel bill. Oof. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of pink insulation you can add. It can help you save money on your fuel bill. It is an open and shut case. Uh... Owens Corning. We put your house in the pink. Texas A&M at LSU is being brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. And by UPS. Whether it's for overnight letters or packages, UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. We have 10 minutes and 28 seconds to go in the third quarter from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Texas A&M has taken a 17-14 lead on a 22-yard field goal. And Scott Slater, the man who kicked the field goal, will now kick it away to Alvin Lee and Eddie Fuller, two freshman speedsters for LSU, and they will be facing that 12-man kickoff coverage team. The Aggies answer to the Kamikazes, who just go full bore as fast as they can, as long as they can. They only take 10 of them on the travel squad. So if somebody gets hurt, someone from the regular roster has to step in. Slater gets all of this one. Take it a yard deep by Lee. Got a chance. Lee to the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. A 32-yard kickoff return. That is the longest in more than three years against this kickoff coverage team. Well, I shouldn't have said the 50-yard line. I should have just said they break the record. Can you imagine that, though? This is the fourth year, and they've gotten to 32 yards as the longest return. Tom Hodson will come back out along with Williams and Jones. The running backs behind him. Now becoming a, a really beautiful night in Louisiana. The temperature cooling off. Very comfortable indeed. Williams is the tailback. He fumbled on the last series. And like would like to atone for it. And it looks like Hodson changed the play. They give it to Williams. He runs smack into Larry Kell. And shows you his strength. He pulled him ahead a couple of yards. Well, one disadvantage in having a freshman quarterback was um, when they went into this game, LSU determined that when Tom, Tom Hudson came up to the line of scrimmage, if he had a play, he could audible. If it was a run, he could go to run. If it was a pass, he could go to the pass. But he couldn't. Obviously, he had a, a run call there, and he couldn't audible to a pass. Couldn't change it. Do you like going back to Williams on the first play uh, after he had fumbled the series before? Uh, he's the type of player you've got to get the ball in his hands. I don't think it worried him much. Tony Moss is in as one of the wide receivers, and here's the play action by Hodson. Throws near sideline, complete. Good pass to Wendell Davis, and he's brought down by Brooks. Hodson has done very well on that short, controlled kind of passing game. Well, we said going in, if he could get the ball to Wendell Davis and Rodney McGee and get the ball to the receivers, it's going to open up everything else. And he has delivered the ball really well. And those, those are hard uh, passes. 15 yards has got to be a bullet. Thrown well to Davis, but I don't believe McGee has touched the ball all night. Hanson now 8 out of 13. Garland Jean-Baptiste back in at the fullback spot. Harvey Williams remains the tailback, and he'll get the ball. Goes right side. He'll pick up about four following uh, Eric Andelsek, who pulled out there and threw him a good block. Now, Williams may be a fixture in this backfield for the next four years. Seven carries, 40 yards. So fast, so big, so confident. He's only a freshman, but he's playing like a big-time player already. I'd like to see him get in the open field just once tonight. Uh, here was a guy who everybody expected to go to Texas A&M, and he ends up at LSU. And there have been uh, one stories like that over the past 40 years. Second down, about five. Hodson with all day in the pocket, throws in a great zone, and the pass is complete to Wendell Davis, and Hodson just rifled it in there. Brooks had great coverage, but he couldn't make the stop. They split the zone on the sideline. Well, it's a nice toss, but it's a great catch. Actually, he's been knocked out of bounds. He was out of bounds, came back in play to make this catch. Right, took it, just took it away from the defender. That's a great grab. Took it away from Chet Brook, number 27. I don't think I'd have I wouldn't have felt too confident throwing that ball right into that coverage. First and 10, LSU in Aggie territory at the 38. 
Fake to Jean Baptiste. Hots it again over the middle. Complete. It's Williams, and Williams is leveled at the eight yard line. No fumble. The ball is down. Holland just unloaded on Harvey Williams. What a shot. But it's a first down, LSU. And Williams showed you some pretty good hands coming out of the backfield. And that's a beautiful pass. He lays it right in. Williams with a nice catch, and he just gets leveled by Holland on this play. Oh. Oh, that just shows his speed, though. He came all the way from the opposite side as a linebacker and made that hit. A tremendous pursuit. It's first and goal, LSU. Wendell Lee. And Lee can't get past the six-yard line. Holland again along with Larry Kelm, and now they're starting to uh, be a little bit more physical in there. See if the last play was a fumble, Pat. Well, this is the element that Harvey Williams will add to you as a receiver and a runner. He's hit right now, and I don't think the ball's loose. No, definitely. Zell no, will hit, the, hit ground. the ground. That was an excellent call. That was an excellent call. The ground does not cause a fumble on any level of football. Ronnie Halliburton has checked in as the second tight end with Brian Kinchin. It is second down and goal from the six. Of course, the play action here. McGee goes in motion. There it is. And the pass complete. Inside the five to about the four to Alvin Lee. Jeff Holly right on top of him. That's good defense in the secondary for a &M. Holly stayed behind him, but he wouldn't give him much room. What you want is you're running back after this uh, play fake. You've got, to, you've got to get into the end zone. When you run a flat route like this, you're going to get hit, and you're not going to be able to turn the ball uphill. So you've got to coach your running backs to get as close to the end zone in that goal line if you can. Bill Arnsparker looking on. If this play doesn't work, he may have to make the decision. Do you go for the field goal to tie it, or do you gamble? 6.52 and counting. Third quarter. Texas A&M leads by three, but LSU is threatening. Wide receivers to the top of your screen. Hodson throws, and he threw that one out of bounds. Definitely Flag is down in the end zone, and it will be interference. The pass was caught uh, well out of the end zone, and I think Hodson just threw that one away to Wendell Davis. Tackled. He would have been open. He was just absolutely tackled before the ball was thrown. Here's the call. And that's going to be a first down for LSU. Okay. The officials are sorted out down here. That's the kind of penalty you hate to see. They really had all the receivers blanketed, and he just absolutely tackled them. The ball was actually being thrown to another receiver. They've done a good job on pass protection. Hodson here in the second half has just been able to stand in the pocket. Pass interference by the defense. Automatic first down at the two. First and goal. Halliburton comes back in as the second tight end. And they'll have four shots to stuff it in there. That's a one-inch penalty, but it's the biggest penalty of the game thus far. Lee 26 and Garland Jean-Baptiste 44, the running backs. Send McGee in motion. Lee with a fake. Toss, knocked down, almost intercepted by Chet Brooks. Brooks was out there, a little surprised at the call, maybe, on first and goal from the two. Now, I think they came in expecting to go with some play action early, which is the right play. This is just an outstanding defensive play. Just a little half roll, the toughest pass to guard and defense. Had a little flat pattern. He just dove and knocked the ball down just in the nick of time. It's so difficult to guard those uh, backs out of the backfield. Trying to get it to Kinchin that time. Harvey Williams will check in on second and goal. He'll be the tailback in the eye behind Sean Batiste. Two tight ends and McGee in motion. Williams diving. Didn't get there. Serious hang time on that dive, though. Boy, it was. Mark him down inside the one yard line. A&M's defensive line just absolutely stops this play, and he has nowhere to go but up and over the top, and then the oh. backers just nail him, push him back. He's like Dwight Stones. we got to pretend we're linebackers here. He's going to jump up, try to go over the top, but he is met by everybody, and just drop Alex Morris, Alex big, Morris. big hitter. Third down, goal. They'll try to dive again. Second up and touchdown. Was that an athletic move? Lewis for the point after. 
It's good. And Harvey Williams with the first touchdown of what should be a brilliant college career, and he did it on second effort. Well, they had stopped him on this. He jumped so high when he gets up off the ground, but he had really nowhere to go. They stopped him, but he somehow managed to land on his feet and fall forward again. And that was Alex Morris again, number 30. He was in on the original hit, but they couldn't stop him the second time. You gotta watch this play again. Watch how high he gets. The medium, five guys hit him. He's down and he comes somehow lands on his feet and gets in. That's just and who did he get away effort. from? Johnny Holland was the last man who had a hand on him. There's Mark Sparker. And it's a 21-17 LSU lead with 5.58 to go in the third quarter. Don't go away. Jeep Cherokee has just been reborn. It can now be ordered with a four-liter, six-cylinder, 173-horsepower engine. Nothing in Cherokee's class even comes close. In fact, with this engine and a choice of two or four doors and two shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive systems, you could say nothing's in Cherokee's class. Sending a letter overnight was once a prerogative reserved only for the very rich and the very wasteful. Now, with the UPS Next Day Air letter, everyone can send a letter overnight. At a paltry $8.50, you may think of it as the overnight letter for the very smart and the very frugal. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Harvey Williams, the man of the hour. His touchdown has put Texas A&M down to LSU, 21-17. to Well, but that feels good. Can we get one of those towels up here? Still feels like it's about 80 degrees. Matt DeFrank will kick it away for LSU. Rod Harris standing at the three-yard line, and seventh-ranked Texas A&M finds itself down by four points on the road. The junior sidewinder. Good kick. Drives Harris to the goal line. They break up the Reds. What a play to the 16-yard line. Scott Bromley was down there on kick coverage. Let's get down to Tim Brando on the sidelines. He has Harvey Williams Sr. with him. You bet, Mike. A couple of happy Harveys. I guess he's got some pretty good hands. Oh, mercy. Uh, you know, I, I'm just so ex excited. I don't know. I can't describe it in uh, words, but uh, it's just that I expected. I think the nation is ready to see uh, another great running it's back a, there. Here's a towel. Wipe off. <laughs> okay. We've got towels down here, Mike. Back up to you. Thank you, Tim. And uh, Mr. Williams, you deserve to be happy about your son. He's played a great ball game in his first appearance. First and 10, Texas A&M. And they'll complete the pass to Bernstein out to about the 21-yard line. Rehaj right on top of him. This scoring drive is the longest, in at least in terms of time, that LSU has had in this ballgame. Four minutes, 24 seconds. Took 69 yards, 10 plays, and Harvey Williams got it on his second try. A one-yard touchdown plunge. That's something he's going to remember the rest of his life. 5-27 and counting, third quarter. Murray going back to work, 18 out of 24, two touchdowns, two interceptions so far. Vick on the toss, and they have done a great job on Roger Vick tonight. Number 97, Tommy Clapp and Toby Caston, 69, along with Brooks, were out there to make the stop. And the LSU crowd is really pumped up. Bill Arnsbarger, in his two years here, is 17-5 and 2. That's not a bad start. 4:47, third quarter, and the crowd on third and five wants that LSU defense to stop them. And Kevin Murray having some trouble calling the signal, and he calls timeout. Just good one here. And he'll go over to talk to Jackie Sherrill with four and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Texas A&M down to LSU by four.
You don't just brew a beer this good. You nurture it day and night. But we don't mind. Our nights make Michelob. And Michelob could make your night the best part of your day. There's something new on the road. It's built by Jeep. It's the kind of truck only Jeep could build. But it's also the kind of truck just about anybody can afford. The new short bed Jeep Comanche sport truck. It's worth a look. Arkansas offensive lineman Chris Beckett talks about the importance of education. Well, I sincerely feel that keeping my priorities of academics athletics and the social life in a clear proper perspective and focusing in on those priorities in exactly that order has been instrumental in completing my undergraduate studies in three years and now i look forward to the big challenge of continuing to combine a football career with the pursuit of a law degree in my final two years of college eligibility texas a&m facing third and five from its own 22 yard line Get a full house backfield, then they'll send Harris in motion. Murray on the scramble, and he got the first down. They mark it at the 27, and now close to the 28, so he got it by a yard. Jefferson covered him. Good hustle don't. by Kevin Murray. He actually did not make this first down. <laughs> well, he played Major League Baseball as a rookie, and this is a nice, clean slide. Oh. But actually, that ball was mismarked. He did not make that first down. He actually went down about the 26. But they marked it at the 28. And it is a first down. Murray has just been exceptional tonight. Here he stumbles on the option. Tosses it back to Vic. Vic with room to run. And then tripped up by Carrier as he got to the 33-yard line. Stop by Carrier. Here's a human mountain. Watch the quickness. He's going to cut. Marshall Land just cuts down that backer. Toby Caston. Excellent leg whip with that. Those are some uh, tree stumps going at you when those legs whip you. 347 pounds going for your ankles. He lost 50 pounds to get there. That's right. He was up to 392. They'll toss it to Woodside. He has not been a factor lately. Woodside breaks this one. Couldn't keep his balance. He might have gone all the way as he got to the 50-yard line. Woodside almost broken. Well, they're, uh, they're able to use Marshall Land to get this corner again. And when Keith Woodside gets some running room, he is dangerous. In fact, right now, he just, just loses his balance. Marshall Land again. Big man's making his presence known. That's an excellent block. He sealed the whole corner. When he gets a corner, he leaves you a lot of yardage, a lot of room to run around. Gets a corner. Woodside will go to the sideline after eight carries for 55 yards. And I think the ankle bothered him earlier. That's why he hasn't been back in there. But it's a first and 10. Murray back to work. Complete again. This time the short toss. The tackle made by Sancho. That's Washington into the ball game. And they have just announced that the attendance tonight is the second largest crowd in the history of Tiger Stadium. 79,713 capacity here is 77,542. So they used a shoehorn to pack them in here. Wonder what they did in 1983 against Washington. They got 82,390 in here. Murray again, this time to Bernstein, the tight end. Inside the 40 to about the 39-yard line, and Bernstein got up and complained about the hit by Lawrence as he was going down. Pearson was the initial tackler. Again, a and going to throw these, toss, these short little tosses, but if LSU can make those tackles man-to-man, -man, they're going to do fine. There are the officers of the day from the cadet corps of Texas A&M trying to root their ball club on. They find themselves down by four points with 2.17 to go third quarter. First and 10, Aggies at the LSU, 38. Roger Vick, no dice. Got absolutely nothing against Daryl Phillips. The backup nose guard had just stuffed it. Bernstein, seven catches, 69 yards tonight. 
He might pass his entire season's total that's, last year. That's in this right. Game. Only had nine all last year. Roger Vick now has gone over the 51-yard uh, mark, or over the 50-yard mark, the 51. It has taken him 18 carries to do it. Second down and 10. Murray back to throw. Pick. And it's intercepted. It's picked off by Gidry. Gidry is tripped up by Murray as he got to the 29-yard line. Kevin Gidry out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, who had two interceptions a year ago, returns this one for 38 yards. That is the third interception of the night, and that time Murray may have telegraphed it. Uh, he was looking all the way at that outside receiver, and that is a dangerous throw. You know, it's amazing, Mike. We've had uh, the biggest plays of the game have been by people named Gidry for LSU. That's right. And they aren't brothers. This is a great pick. He just stepped right in front of him. There's no chance to get that ball in there. Kevin, uh, you know, he has to look off a receiver. You can't give him all day to catch him. Just a nice run here. DBs get the ball. They like to run up the sidelines, I'll tell you. LSU with a big break will take over at their own 30-yard line with 126 to go third quarter. And all of us, I think, here... Uh, connected with our ESPN broadcast a little surprised about all the scoring they have done the job Hodson will quarterback them with Martin and Garland Jean Baptiste his running backs out of the eye Hodson changing the play wide receiver split left and right and they go on the option quickly get the toss to Martin Martin's got 10 yards to the Aggie 20 yard line And Martin a little slow getting up. Nicely designed play. Oh, excellent. Excellent blocking. Little reverse option. Tosses the ball. Sammy Martin, 165 pounds. Watch him run over some people. Put his shoulders down. And he's going to make some extra yards. Sean Batiste leading the way. There's a wide receiver. He's going to seal the corner. Oh. Knocks him right down. And he's going to get somebody else. You don't see that often from a wide receiver. A pancake and then a second block also. Usually don't see the first one. <laughs> they didn't from number 87 with the Cincinnati Bengals very often. <laughs> 120 to go. Third quarter. And if you're not sure, Pat isn't picking on anybody else. That was his number. One of the LSU players uh, being helped off the field. And they've got that left hand wrapped, and that's Jefferson. And he is their best cover man on defense. And they've got that left hand wrapped like he uh, suffered a real injury there. And they're taking him to the locker room, and that's going to be a tough break for LSU. Right now, the Tigers have it. Marked all the way back to the 40-yard line. Hodson, deep down the middle. He's got a man. It's complete at the five to Wendell Davis. And he beat James Flowers, and Hodson laid it in there. 35-yard bomb from redshirt freshman Tom Hodson to junior Wendell Davis out of Shreveport. There is a flag on the play. But it looks like it's against Texas A&M. And it is. It's going to show us here right now why he threw for over 3,000 yards in his senior year. I don't see on the camera, but it's a perfect throw, and Wendell Davis is having a big game tonight. This is a great catch. Super. Over the shoulder. Couldn't see the ball to the last second. Davis now has eight catches for 123 yards. One in the game. LSU knew they needed to hit the wide receivers, and they have succeeded, and that's why they're leading on the scoreboard. Ronnie Halliburton comes in as the second tight end. They go to the eye. Martin, the tailback, dragged down before he got to the five-yard line. Sammy O'Brien just grabbed him like a sack of potatoes and tossed him backward. Which you can expect at a 248 against 165. Uh, Sam Martin, for all his heart and desire, he is not going to run over the top of Sammy O'Brien. LSU has not gone to Brian Kinchin, their tight end, number 49, and they expected to get the ball to him tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to put it in the end zone right now. This could be the last play of the quarter. And they could get called for a delay. LSU is trying to let the clock run out, but they would be called for a delay of the game because of the 25-second clock, and they have to use a timeout. That really hurts. There is a timeout with five seconds to go in the third quarter. LSU 21, A&M 17.
Attention, property owners. According to a recent statistic, we are experiencing the highest rate of foreclosure since the Great Depression. Don't let foreclosure happen to you. Hi, I'm Hill Oob, president of HOI Incorporated, a company designed to help real estate owners with troubled property. If you've tried to sell but can't, or maybe you're experiencing financial or management difficulties with your property, or maybe you're a lending institution with too many REOs, call HOI today. We can help. 834-2033. The candidacy of Judge Saul Gothard represents a new dimension in the Court of Appeal in Jefferson Parish. Judge Gothard has a graduate degree in social work. He is a university professor, respected attorney, author, and for 14 years now, juvenile court judge. Judge Gothard has received recognition from President Ronald Reagan. He has worked tirelessly for legislation for the prevention of child abuse. Please join with me in electing Judge Saul Gothard to the Court of Appeal in Jefferson Parish. On ESPN Scholastic Sports America, I'm Chris Fowler. Please join me every Saturday, 6.30 Eastern on ESPN. A couple of scores to update. USC now leading Illinois at the L.A. Coliseum by the score of 28 to 16. Rodney Pete has scored on a 32-yard run, and Miami is just clobbering Texas Tech. It's just at the start of the fourth quarter now. Miami on top, 54 to 11. This is the story in Baton Rouge. Five seconds to go, third quarter. LSU leading by four and threatening with second and. Five yards to go at the Texas A&M five. Second and goal. Martin and Jean Batiste are the running backs behind Hodson, who used a valuable timeout on a mix-up on the clock. Hodson set the throw. He's got a man catching. Touchdown. Seventeen. He'll try to make it an 11-point lead. Pull that one. But it's still good. Hodson now 13 out of 19. Two touchdowns, 167 yards. And what a play call by Bill Arnsparger. Well, as I said earlier, tight ends are very effective inside the five-yard line. Brian Kinchin managed to get deep. Hodson has a lot of time, just sets back, throws it like a pro. Perfect throw, nice catch. Nice catch. Kinch, and there is Bill Arnsparger on the sideline. He called the play, or at least approved it, and Hodson handled it. And LSU has gone up on Texas A&M by 11. This is Jeep's all-new four-liter six-cylinder engine. It has sequential multi-point electronic fuel injection. It puts out 173 horsepower and 220 foot-pounds of torque. But most important, if you put this new engine in a Jeep Cherokee or Jeep Comanche, you're going to see more speed and power than you've ever seen from vehicles like this. Just remember where you saw it first. Sending a letter overnight was once a prerogative reserved only for the very rich and the very wasteful. Now, with the UPS Next Day Air letter, everyone can send a letter overnight. At a paltry $8.50, you may think of it as the overnight letter for the very smart and the very frugal. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. When people work, chances are they're wearing Dickies. It's the best-selling work set in America. And if you need coveralls, overalls, work gloves, socks, or shirts, footwear, headgear, underwear, or outerwear, they all have Dickies Horseshoe label. Dickies are America's favorite work clothes. But who says you have to work in them? Dickies. Made with Celanese for Trell polyester. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't be buttoned up? And down the earth, underneath it all. Who says you can't have super premium taste and a less filling beer? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Oh. 
In a day of great games and surprises, we have one coming your way with Hodson leading the way for LSU. He has his club on top, 28-17. DeFrank will kick off as we get set to start the fourth quarter. And there is Rod Harris, the sophomore. He is a burner. He can hurt you. And right now, Texas A&M needs it in the worst way. They're down 11. They need two touchdowns or a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal just to tie. And they are pumped in Baton Rouge. Taken by Taylor, one of the up men. And Taylor will get to the 29-yard line, a 21-yard return. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown catch by Kinchin, and it was a great one. Well, this is what play action will do for you. Fakes to the tailback, he buys himself a lot of time, he just sets his feet, and he just lobs this ball perfectly to number 49, Brian Kitchen, makes a nice catch. He is not playing like a red-shirted freshman. No, Tom, he's not. Tom Hodson is sitting in there, he's getting time to throw, and he's picking his receivers and hitting them right on the numbers. Texas A&M has to go to work on offense from the 24-yard line. Murray wants to throw, and it's dropped by Shea Walker, the last guy you would think would drop a pass. He's got great hands. Well, sometimes when you have sore ribs and you're running a slam pattern, you might think twice. But I just hit him on the hands, and he dropped it. Bet you he doesn't drop another one the rest of the night. He, he can not. get open, and I know Murray likes to look for him. He might not drop one the rest of the year. That's right. Second and ten. Murray leads them out. He's had an excellent ball game, but he's been burned by three interceptions. Has all the time in the world, and this time he hits the man again, Shea Walker. He didn't drop that one, and Murray laid it on the numbers again. Pearson made the tackle, but it's a first down, and Walker comes up limping a little bit. That's a sign of a good quarterback, though. Kevin Murray went right back to number 85, Shea Walker. He's going to catch the ball, as we said, almost every time. There is Marshall Land, the starting right offensive tackle. 347 pounds. He only had 17 snaps to play last year before he was hurt. This is his senior year. Jackie Sherrill still thinks he's going to play in a pro. This is Vic on the delay. Across midfield, down to about the LSU 48-yard line. Carl Wilson on the stop. Murray on the night, 21 out of 30. 204 yards, a couple of touchdowns, but he's had those three interceptions. One of the reasons that A&M's offensive uh, running game hasn't done that well is because the defensive backs and linebackers for LSU are making the tackles. And they're making them, dropping them on the first. They're not missing anything. Second down, five yards to go. Vic for remaining running back. Woodside is on a wing. They look for Woodside and find him. 45, 44, 43 yard line. He should have the first down again. Swarmed over. Hazard in on the stop again along with Ron Sancho, 52. Hazard's had quite a ball game. Well, Nicky Hazard, number 48 here, you'll see him drop in his pass coverage and he'll make a tackle again. He's had 13 tackles tonight, 11 solos. Watch him drill Woodside right here. That's a tough man to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. First down, A&M at the 43-yard line of LSU. Jackie Sherrill knows his ball club is in trouble. Preseason number one in a couple of polls. They're ranked seventh right now. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage, and it looked like it was number 62, Daryl Phillips, the backup nose guard. He's got a hand on it. Made a couple of big plays. We have 13 minutes and 24 seconds left to go in this ball game. LSU leading Texas A&M 28 to 17. This is Mike Patrick along with Pat McAnally and Tim Brando. We're really glad you could join us on ESPN for a Saturday night football game from Baton Rouge. It's been a dandy. And it's far from over. Murray. Big play here under pressure. Got rid of it complete to Vic, but Vic is only going to get about a yard out of it. Stacked up by James Pearson. Started the first part of last year and has got the job again as he and Kevin Guidry have split a lot of playing time at that right corner. One thing I love about college football is you never know who the star is going to be. Mickey Hazard comes into this game. All we did was talk about Michael Brooks, Johnny Holland, Toby, Toby Kasten. Kasten, and here's Mickey Hazard with 11 solo tackles. He's done the job. Sometimes offenses try to pick on what they think will be a weak link, and there isn't one. Murray back to throw. In trouble. They got it. Michael Brooks with a sack at the 45. 
The All-American from Ruston, Louisiana, comes through with the big play. They love to bring him on the pass rush. Every time they can blitz somebody, every time they bring a linebacker, Michael Brooks, number 94, is the man. He's as strong as defensive lineman, and he's fast. He just play right off the guard, broke the uh, away from the block, and dropped the quarterback. Going to be fourth down and 12 yards to go. We understand that LSU cornerback uh, Norman Jefferson, who we saw taken into the training room, had stitches in his hand, and he will be back. And here is Craig Stump, the backup quarterback who comes in to punt. Reha signals for the fair catch, but he lets it go. This one might die. Takes the bounce and they'll down it at the 15-16 yard line, so LSU will not have good field position even after a 29-yard punt. Ramada wants to know what makes John Madden mad. Try to get some special treatment in a hotel. You show them your gold card, your silver card, every precious metal card in the book, and they still treat you like a nobody. But don't get mad. Just get yourself a free Ramada business card. One little red card, get your preferred room rate, express check-in and check-out, and more. With treatment like that, why carry anything else? <laughs> Next time, Ramada. Call 1-800-2-RAMADA. You know, life's too short to worry about impressing other people. I mean, have you ever been really impressed by a person's credit card? What matters about a credit card is how it impresses me. MasterCard gives me what I want, and anything is possible. It goes where I want to go. Could be Timbuktu. <laughs> when I want, day or night. <laughs> Don't talk to me about impressions. <laughs> Give me possibilities. MasterCard. Master the possibilities. Live college football on ESPN is being brought to you by Volvo. A car you can believe in. 11 minutes, 49 seconds left to go in the ball game from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. And LSU is surprising Texas A&M 28-17. The Tigers have the football. They'll start deep in their own territory at the 16. And the Bill Arnsparger fan club grows by the minute. Harris is in at fullback, number 30. They'll give it to the tailback, Harvey Williams, who breaks tackles and gets out to about the 23. Interesting about Orange Parker, that he went down and interviewed for the uh, Florida athletic director job and really upset some folks around here. But if you play this way, he can probably go interview for anything he'd like as long as he comes back. Well, they're doing nothing but cheering tonight. Yeah, that, this is why it was a very critical game for him to have a good performance. They were very unhappy. Yeah. 11 minutes, 20 seconds to go. Second down, about two yards to go. And Texas A&M going with its second team defense, at least in a couple of positions. Gilbert is in there at the nose guard in place of Sammy O'Brien. The starting ends are in there, Sadler and Muller, and the call is going to go against LSU. Now the officials will sort it out. Updating you on some scores, Southern Cal has beaten Illinois the final 31-16. Oh, ball start, offense. Ball start on LSU. So instead of second and three, they're going to have a second and eight situation. Love the Tigers, you bet they do. They love them win or lose, but somehow you tend to love them a little more when they win. And that's everywhere but they have jammed in here tonight the second largest crowd in this stadium's glorious history and they have seen some football down here at LSU I'm not sure what the delay is right now it looks like the uh, 25 second clock not working Hope you're going to be with us next Saturday, the 20th of September. Our coverage between Penn State and Boston College will start at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Larry and Vino will host the Lincoln Mercury College football scoreboard show. And at 7.30, Penn State will kick it off against B.C., a winner today. Immediately following the game, stay tuned for the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report. Larry and Vino will be there with you, and it never fails every Saturday. Upset and surprise, and we sure had them today.
Can you believe Ohio State uh, just had it handed to them on the West Coast? They're not going to be happy. Those Buckeye fans are not going to be happy about that one. No, especially when you start in the top five of the country and lose the first two. There's a good look at Mickey Guidry, who has come back into the ball game. And what a story this kid has been. He came in in the first half through two passes and got a touchdown out of it and hasn't been back in the ball game since. First time Ohio State has started 0-2 since the 1890s. I love trivia. 10.58 to go. Second down, eight yards to go. Gidry, the quarterback, has McGee in motion to toss to Williams. Good cutback, and he was drilled as he got up to about the 22-yard line. Jay Muller trailing the play, really got a shoulder pad in there. And Harvey Williams, as a uh, freshman running back, has acquitted himself rather well. 11 for 53 and a touchdown. Well, that play didn't gain much, you know, maybe three or four yards, but you could really see us. He's six foot two. And he's 205 pounds and great acceleration, and he's fearless. Another freshman, Alvin Lee, comes in to take the spot at tailback. And we've got a timeout called by Texas A&M. That's five timeouts tonight. They've thrown away for a variety of reasons. 28-17, LSU with the lead, 10-19 to go in the ball game. We'll be back right after this. The 740 Turbo Wagon by Volvo. Until Ferrari builds a wagon, this is it. Moving 200,000 families a year is a big responsibility, one we take very seriously at United Van Lines. And we prove it with services other movers don't offer at any price, like the exclusive protection of our sanitized, treated vans, or the facts we provide about the city you're moving to. It's schools, churches, residential and shopping areas. It's all part of United's commitment to excellence. And the quality shows in every move we make. Third down, four yards to go for LSU. They have the ball at their own 23-yard line, trying to keep this drive alive and burn some time off the clock that shows 10 minutes and 19 seconds to go. Texas A&M desperately needs the ball back. Harvey Williams is checked back in. He is now to wing left. The fullback is Mickey Harris, number 30, on third and four. Mickey Guidry, the quarterback. Pressure. He got away from the rush and throws incomplete. It was tipped. It appeared to be. Aaron Wallace may have gotten a hand on Todd Howard, number 73. May have been the man that tipped it. Guidry flushed out of the pocket and unloaded at least didn't take the loss. And now they'll have to kick it away. Well, this would be a great time to have another 58-yarder like he did on the first effort. Matt DeFrank kicking to Mickey Washington, who is standing at his own 45-yard line. 180-pound freshman, another burner. Most of these guys can run. Good blocking. DeFrank drives one out of there. Washington fumble. And Washington, fortunate, and got it back at his own 28-yard line. He wanted to catch that thing, and he looked like an outfielder holding his arms straight up instead of cradling it in toward his body. Well, this is a real strange kick. It's a half spiral that's curved back at him, and it goes back over his shoulder. He was surprised by the ball. It should have uh, been back further and coming forward the ball. You don't want to catch it over your shoulder. 40-yard kick and a loss of nine on the return, so a and will start at its own 28 when we come back. I swear we've been through everything there is can't imagine anything the two of us can do through the years you've never let me down and i'm so glad i've stayed right here with you through the years. volvo built to get you through the years now every 86 volvo comes with on call a unique roadside assistance plan The night 
has a beat of its own. A theme of its own. A beer of its own. Exceptionally smooth, Niccolo. It could make tonight the best part of your day. Texas A&M sold 6,000 tickets for this ball game, all that they had. And they are not a very happy group right now, down 28-17. And they're going to have to go to work on offense. Kevin Murray brings them out from the 28-yard line. Draw play. This is Valentine to the 37-yard line. The senior from Marshall, tackled by Nikki Hazard, who has been all over the field. Here's what Texas A&M has done to itself. Three interceptions. One didn't hurt them because LSU fumbled it back. The other two led to Tiger touchdowns and a 28-17 lead. Murray has been intercepted those three times. He has thrown a pair of touchdown passes. They'll get it to Vic on the toss. This has been diagnosed well all night long, and it is again as Steve Rehaj strings it out to the sideline and stops him short of the first down. It looks like LSU came in here with a game plan, Pat, of saying Roger Vick is not going to be the guy that beats us. And I think that's the right game plan. You have to stop A&M's running game. That was their number one goal in this game. Stop their running game, and then they're going to gamble with their secondary and their linebackers, and it's been the right uh, choice right so far. Vick has gained 59 yards, but he's had to do it on 20 carries. That's a tough night. Vick again. He'll get the first down as he picks up maybe two on this before he's thrown back. Hazard in there along with Barbe and Henry Thomas, the nose guard. One thing very uncharacteristic of a Jackie Sherrill coach team is AM has thrown away five timeouts tonight. There are, and now there's uh, eight, and a, eight minutes, almost nine minutes left in the game. They're down by two scores, and they've thrown them away for substitutions, confusing defenses with a quarterback call timeout. That's going to hurt them. Norman Jefferson comes back into the ball game as LSU beefs up its secondary. Jefferson had the stitches in his hand and is back in. Murray chased out of the pocket. Brooks had him. He got rid of it somehow and completed it to the 45-yard line. What a play. And the pass is complete to his tight end Burns team. He threw it from a prone position. This guy is tough. Michael Brooks, look at it. what an athlete he is. He's blitzing from the outside. He's going to beat the blocker. He's going to run Murray down. In his book, this is a sack. He's got him down. I don't know. He's down. Oh, he was, was down. Well, Michael Brooks, you deserved a sack on that one. Both knees are down before he unloads. I can't believe that uh, Kevin Murray even thought to throw this ball. Oh, he's both definitely knees down. flat on the ground. Well, a break for AM. Second and five. Here comes Brooks, Brooks again. again. He got him this time. Consecutive sacks from All-American linebacker Michael Brooks. Bill Arnsbarger told us before the game that he has the potential to be the best player he's ever been around. That's anyone in the pros, all his years of coaching. Michael Brooks making his presence felt when they need it. Look how fast he is. Takes him down, he holds on to it. He did not let him go down. Kevin Murray wasn't going to throw this one from his knees. He said his neighborhood was so tough when they played sandlot football and somebody got hit real hard, they just walked to their car, get a gun, and come back. <laughs> he says, this is easy. Murray on third and long, bombs away. He's got his man out there, and he underthrows and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kevin Guidry again. He had Shea Walker out there by two steps, and Murray couldn't get him the ball. He threw it as far as he could. Gidry was beaten. Walker had two steps. Could have been a touchdown, and Murray just couldn't get it there. Well, LSU's got an 11-point lead, and they're going to start dropping back in their zones now. They're dropping deep. Shea Walker sneaks behind, but this is a tough throw. This is like throwing a cross-court pass in basketball. Al McGuire, Al McGuire wouldn't like it. I'm sure the coach Sherrill didn't like that. It's a tough throw, rolling to your left, throwing all the way back to the right. Most of the time, it does get intercepted. Big night for Kevin Gidry. Hodson comes back into the ball game, and LSU now with 7.09 to run off the clock. They lead by 11 points. They're more interested in that clock than they are in the scoreboard. They'll run the option. Hodson keeps it to the 23-yard line. I guess you don't want to become too conservative right now, Pat, but you don't want to turn it over either. 
What they'd like to get right now is about a four or five minute drive. Here's Pearson on the sideline shaking up on the last play. But all they have to, they pat him on the back, all they have to tell him is look up to the scoreboard. He'll feel a lot better in a minute. Harvey Williams back in there at a tailback spot, and there is Jackie Sherrill making some notes on the sideline. A man who has done a great job at Texas A&M, facing a man who has done an equally brilliant job at LSU, Bill Arnsparger. They'll give it to Williams, change of direction, and that was a mistake because Todd Howard from Bryan, Texas, was waiting for him. Howard had 114 tackles a year ago. He's just a great athlete. And there you see the clock down to 6'10". Todd Howard went out to the Golden State Decathlon, and he had never performed, and he got third place. He just 4'5 speed, and he really haven't heard his name much tonight. They kept him out of the action. He had to borrow equipment, didn't he? Yeah, he just borrowed other people's and beat him. Sure, he asked nicely, but I'm sure they gave it up in a hurry, too. Third and seven. Hodson changing the play at the line of scrimmage. John Batiste, the only man behind him. Here comes the blitz, and he picked it up. Throws complete to Davis. The tenth catch for Davis. The whistles are sounding. And they're pointing to the 25-second clock. They may call this one back, and that would get Davis uh, back down to nine catches. The club record is 11. Yep, they didn't get it off in the 25-second allotment, and the crowd doesn't like that call at all. It was really a late whistle. The pass has already been. Bill Arnsparger thought it was a late call, too. Pass had already been uh, thrown when the whistles were blown. Critical mistake. They had the first down to Davis. The of game, offense. Well, that's a big mistake. Big, big mistake. They had the first down picked up. Now they've got to go third and 12. Bill Arnsparger not happy. Here's his reaction to the call. <laughs> What's he doing on the field anyway? On the sideline. Yeah, he's only five yards out there. <laughs> Clock running with 5.19 to go. Now third and 12, and they'll go to the air. Hodgson to throw, and completes it to Martin. At the 35, it's a first down. There is another flag down, and I think this one will go against Texas A&M. It is roughing the passer. They'll tack some more onto it. And that was the play that may have done it. Took a lot of guts to call that play, a passing play. I, I wouldn't have been surprised play. if they had just tried to run the ball and set up their punt team, but uh, Bill's going for the win tonight. Sammy Martin managed to get open. It was another excellent throw by Hodson. He's on the money tonight. That's rolling goes left, too. That's a very difficult throw. Hodson's done a great job, and Jackie Sherrill now in a lot of trouble. See if we can pick up the penalty on this uh, last play, the roughing the quarterback. Watch number 55, O'Neal Gilbert. He's going to go with the left hand of the head, and that is a penalty, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, it doesn't look quite as bad when you show it in slow motion, so it's a little tough to tell. I saw his helmet move in the opposite direction it had been sitting. And you can bet if the helmet moves, the head inside it goes with it. <laughs> 5-11 left, LSU in the driver's seat, which would be a major victory for this program. Bill Arnsparger in two years, 17-5-2. Could be another giant win. McGee in motion. They'll toss it to Williams. Wants to stay in bounds. Still on his feet, cuts back to the second time. Fumble the ball, but it's out of bounds at the 42-yard line. It stopped the clock, but second effort and third effort really got Harvey Williams seven yards. Well, Harvey Williams is really making his presence felt. I think he broke, oh, maybe four or five tackles on this, and he only had a couple yards to work with. He gets outside, and here goes one. There goes two. He jumps over his own man. Three, four, five, six. The guy finally got him down. He only had three or four yards to work with. Second and three after the gain of seven. Sam Martin back into the ballgame as the tailback behind Jean Batiste. They'll give it to Martin. First down. Cuts outside midfield. 47 yard line of Texas AM. And LSU is really showing the country something here. And another flag goes down. Alex Morris made the stop. And Martin is really upset as they get him up. We'll check the call for you. Personal foul, Texas A&M. They're driving him down the field. That's two personal fouls that's on this right. drive. And that's the frustration. 
these guys had a shot coming in here, a potential shot at a national championship, and Morris is out of the ball game. I believe they are taking him over there to the sideline, escorted by the official. Here's the call. There was a first down on the play, and then after the ball was dead, personal foul. Tigers <laughs> crew. 4.45 left to go. LSU just grinding on the clock, grinding out yardage. Here's the play. Martin is down, and you can't tell it from that angle. Jean Baptiste up the middle inside the 30 to about the 27. Besides his gifts as an athlete, the reason Harvey Williams is so important to LSU's offense is because he needs, they need to rest Sammy Martin. As we talked earlier, he's only right. 165 pounds. They need to mix those two up to have that offense run in all the gears. Plus, Martin is such a terrific re receiver. He has 102 yards receiving tonight, along with 49 yards on the ground. So he's had a whale of a ballgame, over 150 yards in total offense. And Pat, as you said, Harvey Williams has served notice on the Southeastern Conference and the rest of the NCAA that he's going to be around for a long time. Williams has it again. Hurdles into Batiste. That's Dana Batiste, the backup linebacker. Clock now really a factor. 343 and rolling. The price of those has just gone up. The I Love S LSU Tigers. They'll be selling those babies after the game. <laughs> Williams, 14 carries, 61 yards. It has been a great offensive show for a team that everyone expected had to be carried by its defense. And they want to throw. Hudson, complete again to Wendell Davis. Ten catches on the night for Davis down to the 16-yard line. Batiste makes the tackle. What do you think of that call? It's an excellent call. I, I was looking for a play action, some type of pass. Again, Arnsbarger is going for the win. Wendell Davis is isolated right here. Number 82, it's just a simple route. Hodson has all day to throw the ball. Davis just finds a seam, and he turns the ball up. Well, they had a, a man short and a man deep on that side of the zone. Jeff Holly just caught in between, had nowhere else to go. Ten catches for Wendell Davis, 133 yards. In almost a third of what he did all last year. First and 10, 255 to go in the game. And falling to the ground that time, Hodson, it looked like one of the guards pulled out or the center and caught his ankle and tripped him. It's about the only thing he's done wrong tonight. That wasn't his fault. Clock continues to run, 239. Texas A&M only has one timeout left. Although timeouts may be the least of their worries right now. Well, they've run at least six minutes off the clock right here I think they go in and score it's their game they have gone against a veteran defense moved it down the field when they had to do it after already scoring 28 points Williams and Harris are the running backs Williams cuts off the right side cuts back hit very very hard that time Brooks came up from the corner and nailed him Larry Burnett has an update for us on the scoreboard show Larry all right, Mike, we've got some scores here from night games. First of all, in the Southwest Conference, number 15, Baylor is leading Louisiana Tech. That one is in the fourth quarter. Arkansas has defeated Mississippi. Shutout time, 21 to nothing for Ken Hatfield and his gang. In the third, it is Stanford on top of Texas, 31 to 17. And a final score, Pitt and North Carolina State play to a 14-14 tie. Let's go back to Baton Rouge. Thank you, Larry. Of course, we saw Pittsburgh earlier in in the year and they tied tonight 14 14 timeout with 208 to go we'll be back in baton rouge in a moment Attention, property owners. According to a recent statistic, we are experiencing the highest rate of foreclosure since the Great Depression. Don't let foreclosure happen to you. Hi, I'm Hill Oob, president of HOI Incorporated, a company designed to help real estate owners with troubled property. If you've tried to sell but can't, or maybe you're experiencing financial or management difficulties with your property, or maybe you're a lending institution with too many REOs, call HOI today. We can help. 834-2033. Hey, Vern. Boy, Vern, this must be the highest point in Louisiana. Speaking of high, I heard about that electric bill of yours. Vern, gas beats these all-electric homes every time. Well, I've comparisized it and analyzed it. Gas, electric, electric, gas. And it's like they say at LGS, gas works for less. So, Vern, switch to gas and bring your energy costs back down to earth. Know what I mean? 
Burn us! Oh, burn! Use the day's most important NFL matchups and reviews the most exciting sports highlights of the week Sunday morning on ESPN. We're down to two minutes and eight seconds to go at Baton Rouge, Louisiana Tiger Stadium where the homestanding LSU Tigers are leading 28-17. We want to thank our statistician, as always, Chuck Freeby, our spotters tonight who did a great job for us, Alan Cannon and Bill Frankes. Thank you guys for a wonderful job. Great assistance. Give it off up the middle, just trying to kill the clock. Holland in on the stop of Sam Martin. We're under two minutes, and LSU is salting this one away. What a great start for them, and what a position it's going to put them in. A lot of people now going to look at them as certainly one of the, the favorites for the Southeastern Conference race, especially with Tennessee getting beaten today by Mississippi State. Well, we knew they'd have the, the uh, strong defense, and they have played exceptionally well. But it's a surprise as Tom Hodson has been able to get the ball to Sammy Martin and Wendell Davis. They've mixed up the runs and the passes, and he's been cool and collected. Texas A&M has used its last time out. They cannot stop the clock again. And LSU is taking its own sweet time in getting this one off on fourth and five. And they're going to send Lewis in and go for the field goal. Now, is this rubbing a little salt in it, maybe? Oh, no, you have to make the play. You have to do this because if you have uh, to do what you hand in the score is an onside kick or within a touchdown. Oh, they got to get this. Do you think it's a gamble going for the uh, field goal chance of a block? No, you got to go for the field goal here. You want a 14 point lead. Well, I can't ask you any correct questions tonight, I guess. We know kickers. You know, we, we stick together. <laughs> he wants three points on his record. They are penalized five yards for delay. They never had one snap mishandled last year. That may be one reason they're willing to go. Chris Carrier, very consistent. The ball is spotted to 24. It will be a 34-yard field goal attempt. It's got plenty of leg, but it's going to be wide right. And Texas A&M will take over with 1.06 left in the ball game. They'll have the ball deep in their own territory when we come back. A car company famous for reliability now offers a roadside assistance plan that owners of cars less famous for reliability might envy. Presenting On Call, a comprehensive roadside assistance plan that includes a 24-hour emergency toll-free number, towing, and other emergency services, all available without charge for owners of this year's Volvo. The On Call plan from Volvo. Isn't it ironic? The car that has it may just need it the least. Introducing McDonald's NFL Kickoff Payoff. Oh boy, a new game at McDonald's! I'm so excited! How do you play? Collect trading cards of all your favorite NFL stars. Another card! Yes, yes, yes. No. Oh, oh, right. I got it! Yeah. Each card's a winner. Win a McDonald's sandwich, fries, or Coca-Cola. New winners every week! But you got only one week to turn in your winning cards, so hustle! NFL Kickoff Payoff. Follow me! At McDonald's! I know a shortcut! Hope you'll be with us next week, 7.30 in Boston. Boston College a winner today against powerhouse Penn State, as always. That's always a good ball game, the Nittany Lions and the Eagles. And we hope it's just like tonight. Craig Stump has checked into the lineup as Texas A&M's quarterback. Murray was 24 out of 35, 214 yards and two touchdowns, but he had four interceptions on the night. Stump, a junior from Port Arthur, Texas. Gets his pass away, completes it to Tony Thompson. Thompson at the 30. Tackled by Caston. Stump last year started a couple of ball games. Started the last eight of 1984, so he is an experienced quarterback. Pick would have been complete again, and it's intercepted by Brooks. 20, 15, maybe caught from behind. No, sir. Touchdown, LSU.
There is All-American Michael Brooks, and now he'll go back on the point after protecting. And the kick is good. Brooks makes the big play on the fifth interception of the night for that Tiger defense. And again, that was not the quarterback's fault. No, this ball is tipped up, but this shows you Michael Brooks is all over the field. This is why he's considered the best linebacker in the country all around. Fast, strong, ball pops up, should have been caught. But James he's right House. there. The great players are always where they're supposed to be. This is funny. Watch 27 Gidry. This is a really curious block there. He gets pushing him into the end zone. I guess he got a little free ride. But I think he was getting a little tired. Look at shove him aside. Michael Brooks has really asserted himself in the second half. Had a couple consecutive quarterback sacks. Made tackles all over the field and scored his touchdown there. And LSU has blown it open with 45 seconds left to go. 35 to 17. It's not been that much of a blowout. It is a very, very tight ball game. And believe me, Texas A&M will be hurt from the rest of the year. This is no indication of what's going to happen to them in 1986, I don't believe. I think Michael Brooks must have heard us talk about Nicky Hazard. You didn't want That's Hazard right. to get too cocky. He started That's doing right. it himself. One other point, though. LSU has done an excellent job on the coverage of the kickoffs. They met the challenge of the 12th man from Texas Yes, they have. Done a good job. Matt DeFrank to kick it away. And they'll get the short squib kick to Valentine. Loose ball. Valentine fell on it. Mike DeWitt down there with him on coverage. And we only have 39 seconds left. And Texas A&M just has to be a little bit shell-shocked right now. Well, it's funny how games can turn around. It was such a tight match, but then LSU started getting their own way. The big turnover, when Murray threw that pick, when they were driving for a touchdown, they ended up LSU scoring uh, when they got the ball. And I'll tell you, I'm tipping my hat to Beano Cook on this one. He called, this, he called LSU, and I'll tell you. That was a that's tough a, call. That's a gutsy call. Stump the quarterback. He'll give on the draw to Valentine. Valentine up to about the 29-yard line. It's all over, but counting down the last 29 seconds. I'm glad the clock's working now. That's right. Phillips made the tackle. Gain of five. Stump in the hurry-up offense. Give the draw to Valentine again. There's Rehage once more. He's had a lot of tackles tonight. Excellent game for Steve Rehage, the strong safety. He went out in nine seconds, make it ten, and they stopped the clock to move the change. Stump has him out of, up the line of scrimmage, trying to get him another play, maybe two. Another draw to Valentine. Gets to the 41. Three seconds, two. And LSU has done it. They have beaten Texas A&M. 35 to 17. And Jackie Sherrill quickly on the field to shake hands with some of the LSU players. And there is Bill Arnsparger, who is now 18, 5 and 2. And he and Jackie Sherrill exchange greetings in the center of the field. And you can believe that Texas A&M will be back. But look out for LSU as Bill Arnsparger has come in here, turned the program around in a hurry, which is what they wanted from him. And he's done an exceptional job, not only on defense, which is his specialty, but look at the scoreboard. 35 points on the scoreboard, and Tim Brando has the winning coach on the sideline. Tim? All right, Mike, thank you very much. A huge victory for this LSU team. And Coach Arnsparger, they call you the doctor of defense. You had quite an offensive show tonight. Well, we just tried to do what we had to do. It, it's one-on-one -on -one battles, and we were hoping to win the one-on-one -on -one battles. They were saying on the A&M side that it was sort of like fool's gold. Even though they had the lead, they couldn't establish a running game. Was that the key for your defense in this game? Well, you hope so. We, we just got to go from here, and we're just real happy over the way it worked out. What about the play of Hodgson and Williams, two freshmen that acquitted themselves tonight extremely well? Well, I think our entire football team uh, had confidence that we could do things if we just kept working. You've had a lot of big ones. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Bill Arnsparger, the head football coach of the LSU Tigers, a team that has scored perhaps the biggest win under his three-year reign here in Tigertown. And we'll continue with more from Tigertown after this. We're going to miss you.